<sighs> What's up? So, get the music adjusted. There we go. Yeah, I stink. All right. <laughs> oh, fresh off a of fucking workout. Oh, just things ache, things hurt. How's everybody doing? Ah, well, tech support. I mean, if they'd stop drinking bleach, <laughs> I wouldn't have that headline. Hey, with it. <clears throat> that that headline is not like pulled out of my ass. The Dallas contingent to that fucking QAnon shit where they're, by the way, they're still there. 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 Um, they're drinking bleach. Um, the MMS, Miracle Mineral Solution or Master Mineral Solution. Um, from where, Judgment? Um, fucking, uh, which is just chlorine dioxide, by the way. It's just chlorine dioxide. It's di dilute chlorine dioxide. Um, ah. Hey, Lexi. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It, 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 Flavorade, dig. Flavorade. Kool-Aid got the fucking short end of that stick. Um, so, yeah, they, um, the Dallas contingent of that fucking weirdo QAnon fucking shit that's still waiting for the return of JFK Jr. They've been passing around vials of MMS apparently and consuming it. Um, so yeah, um, like I, they're drinking bleach now. They're drinking bleach. Um, yes, the QAnon cult members that are still in Dallas, Texas, waiting for the return of JFK Jr., and Michael Jackson, amongst others, to to bring about Donald Trump's uh, uh, cleansing of the deep state and the global Democrat pedophile ring, um, are now passing around jugs of bleach for each other to drink. So, just saying, I'm just saying. This shit basically has gone Jonestown. I mean, it's not full Jonestown, but I mean, it's basically Jonestown, right? It's poison. It's poison. It's not going to kill them instantly, um, depending on what concentration levels they're consuming and how much of it they're consuming, I suppose. Um, but I mean, the comparison is there. Uh, um, Alex, I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay, my my forearm issue is killing me here. I'd rather be lifting, um, but I did like heavy leg. Uh, I did core and legs today, so you know it is what it is. Um, good news, my mom is getting married tomorrow. Well, she's doing her paperwork tomorrow. It's still small party because her mother in law insisted. Um, well, I I think that's a good thing. You're saying it's a good thing, so Crimson, congratulations. Um, oh fuck you. I'm trying to get back on a climbing wall. Tendinosis, uh, uh, a tendinopathy is not what I need right now. And it is, it is killing me here. Um, uh, so how do we get people who aren't suicidal from killing themselves? Um, or like, are you saying we should stop them with her? Cause... I mean, anyway, <clears throat> did everybody see uh, Trump got booed and shit at his like, um, he was hanging out with in Dallas with Bill O'Reilly at some fucking convention thing. And, um, he said he got the, uh, vaccine booster. Um, so his, his, 
Yeah. Yeah, he he got he got jeered pretty hard by his audience here. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Both the president and I are vaxxed, and uh, did you get the booster? Yes. I got it, too. Okay, so... Um, oh, don't, 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 no, no. That's all. There's a very tiny group over there. Both the president and I are yeah. vaxxed, and uh, did you get the booster? Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> like, even he's like, even at this point, even he understands. Like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. You're making us look bad. <laughs> when even Trump's aware of the, uh, of the, um... The optics. Um, yeah, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, they non binary. Good, this is charged. I can unplug it. Uh, yes, that was this weekend. Um, so. Yeah, oh yeah. Um Oh, um Lexi, Alex. Did you see that fucking um the the barbed wire in in Wales, in South Wales? Hey, caboose. A uh, caboose. There is a um there is a nod to your namesake from Red versus Blue in the new Halo. There 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 actually is a way to trigger um, the blue Master Chief character in um, a lineup when they go down the line for multiplayer for like teams or whatever, um, he'll be turned around looking back, f facing backwards while everybody else is facing out doing some sort of pose as a, as a nod to uh, Caboose in uh, Red vs. Blue. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you trigger it. I don't know what the trigger for it is, but it, it's an Easter egg in there. Um, yeah, you can you can actually trigger the the classic red versus blue caboose intro. Um, <clears throat> Alex, let me get you a photo. Um, all right. Fair warning. If you're like sensitive to like, this isn't gore. I mean, this, this, this does not qualify for gore, but this is, this is bodily injury. Um, he survived. He, he lives. He's not going to be permanently, you know, fucked up, but, um, this was confirmed by multiple sources. Um, <clears throat> um, while a gentleman was riding, um, out by, hang on, let me get you the name. Um, I can actually get you the fucking name of the place. Um, Rhonda Valley, R-H-O-N-D-D-A Valley in South Wales. Um, he was riding his bike down a bike trail. Somebody strung barbed wire at head level, at neck level, across the bike trail. So, apparently, according to multiple links and multiple, like, people contributed, this is far from the first time this has happened in that neck, forgive me, that neck of the woods. Um, apparently it's pretty common. Yeah, non-binary. That's been happening for years. Yeah, apparently it's pretty common in that part of the world. Um. Like, not every day or every month, but, like, once a year, somebody gets their head almost taken off by some barbed wire because reasons. Um. Yeah, it's an ongoing thing in in like Europe and the UK. Yeah, like it's a, it's a thing over there. Um. Uh, 
Karina, apparently it's mostly just NIMBY. It's people who don't like the one of the last incidents that was recorded was a woman who just was sick and tired of bicyclists coming around the corner and scaring her. So she strung up some high test line. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's that's that apparently in like Europe Stan, UK Stan territory. That's usually the reason is like how dare these people and so they they fucking do that I, it's actually um yeah there there's the correct spelling from caboose and i am b y nimby it means not in my backyard um <laughs> Caboose, fair enough. Um, do, do I think wearing shibari cosmetically in public is involving people in in, in your kink? Um, I mean, shibari is not my kink, but <laughs> either way. Um, hot take. Hot take. Yes, and I don't care. I think it's done in a way that doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't actually affect you. Yeah. Like, so. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Um, yeah. So. Also, just a note. Just a note. To the woman who who complained that she was virtually groped in the metaverse in some VR simulation and that she was sexually assaulted in 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 a VR chat that she was groped her word her word her word that she was groped in a metaverse VR chat no no no, you weren't. No. I'm sorry. I refuse. I refuse to cross that line. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely refuse to cross that line. No. We, we, no. Just, no. No. So, yeah, yeah, that's just fucking burnout. Caboose has got that spot on. Uh, haptics must have come a long way. Um, yeah, I just, I refuse. I, I, I just refuse. I'm sorry. No. Um, So everybody knows, so all the old timers, I know this is scary that this is an old timer. Um, remember when you got teabagged in original Halo and like all that sort of stuff, right? Remember you getting teabagged in multiplayer? That was sexual assault. Yeah, that was, that was, that was sexual assault. That was groping. That was rape. Like that's, that's what that was. No. No, it wasn't. Like, it, it just, I'm sorry, we have to draw the line somewhere. Right? Like, we have to draw the line somewhere. This is just not, until you, like, get a fucking jack in the back of your head and it makes it neurologically real for you, get over your fucking self. Oh, man, I've assaulted many in Halo. My apologies, this dick. Uh, well, Buddhist, you, you are a rapist. Um, yes, you are a terrible, terrible human being beyond redemption. 
They even have personal space features, from what I've been told, Caboose, to, like, keep avatars off you. Like, yeah. Like, I just can't. I can't anymore. I can't. When I saw that headline, I was like, oh, fuck you. Just fuck off. <laughs> and a serial rapist did that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Virtual serial rapist. <sighs> Yeah, Wither, as far as we're concerned, the instant you signed on to the game, you were consenting. <laughs> uh. Oh, here's one of my favorite new ones. Is Rev uh, is Rev here? Rev, I hope Rev is here. If not, I'll 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 revisit this story. Um, but if Rev is here, he's gonna absolutely love this. He's gonna this is just this is right up Rev's alley. Um, virtual sex. Of, okay. Uh, Rev, this is the screen of a Mercedes EQS. You, only the special, uh, only the specialist personnel of a qualified specialist workshop should open the hood. Access by the customer is not permitted to open the hood. Consult a qualified specialist workshop. I can explain it to you, Viva. Um, so here's the deal. Under the hood of a Mercedes EQS, it is, there's basically nothing there. What is actually under the hood of a Mercedes EQS is apparently the high voltage equipment for the electric drivetrain of the vehicle. So as far as they're concerned, like anything else, hey, Crix, anything else, like windshield wiper fluid, um, any anything else that needs servicing, like standard like maintenance, has been relocated or reported elsewhere. So you can access it outside the hood. The argument is, is that the only stuff under the hood in that vehicle is shit that essentially could kill you. Like straight up. It's, it's high voltage capacitance, that sort of thing. Um, that is the argument for it. Here is my counter argument. Fuck you, I don't care, let me open my hood. If I wanna shock myself to death using like high voltage battery packs under the hood of my Mercedes EQS, I paid a shitload of money for this vehicle, I want in that hood. If I want to use a third-party contractor, a non-fucking certified Mercedes specialist to look at or work on this car, fuck you, I paid for this car. So, that. Uh, thanks for the follow, Zoe. Um... Yeah, like I'm 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 of the opinion I I I'm of the opinion straight up like just give me a button to click. I'll acknowledge it. If you want to pop up and be like if you touch the wrong thing once this hood is open, you will die. Do you acknowledge that we are not responsible for your idiocy from this point out? Click. I'm cool with that. I'm okay with that. Just let me get it open. Don't hard lock it. Don't be like, the only way you can do this is if you go to a Mercedes specialist. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly, Ross. This might kill you and hurt the entire time. Do you accept liability? Done. Howdy. Hey, 
exactly tech support. Just give me the option. Don't hard lock me out. Fuck you for that shit. Yeah, that falls firmly under right to repair. Fucking. Okay. Look. I'm of the opinion. If you have an item and I give you money for it, it's mine now. I don't actually believe in leasing. I don't believe in rental. I don't believe in like, uh, you know, license, like traditional software licenses. I don't believe in them. If, if you have an item and that item goes from your possession to my possession after I give you money, that's mine now. That's, that's just how it is. And by the way, if you do anything to get in my way of ownership of that item, I will disable your mechanisms, be it DRM or whatever needs doing, whatever needs doing. That is my personal held belief. So fuck off. I know, right? Fire for sure. Uh, Monica, probably, (laughs) um, I am, I am the touchstone for anarchism, uh, especially on left Twitch. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Um, understand we, we vary from topic to topic and I, I have a very sort of fluid, um, modality, shall we say. Um, but I'm more than happy to answer some questions for you. Just Patience and those sorts of things, right? Uh, right now, we're just sort of bitching about right to repair and how Mercedes locks out ownership. Um, Kai, Kai is the keystone of that gay shit and anarchism. Usually both. Uh, <laughs> hey, Panda. Um, oh, I know. Right, Dig? Fucking A. Right, Dig? Like, that's, 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 mm. Mm. Uh, Toyota doesn't look, let you look or unlock the car with the key radio if you don't pay a subscription, even though they paid for the f- uh, function. Um, yeah, I heard about that, um, Viva. That, like, 2000, like, I, it's not on mine. I don't know whose vehicles that is on. Is that, like, what year is that moving forward? Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a, um, yeah, is it okay if they're too dumb? I know nothing. I think I might be leftist, but I really don't know at this point. I mostly follow Hannah and Jake on Twitch. I don't know who Hannah and Jake are. Um, off the top of my head, somebody else. 2019 upwards. Okay. Wait, I have a 2019. It doesn't have that. No. Um, Monica, by all means, um, ask away. Your questions aren't going to be too dumb. Um, we have We have drunk chuds that I answer questions for, so... By all means. Um, oh, one second. Jesus Christ. Wither, 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 wither. What is this about? I have to ask. Um, what, what is, what, what, you've got a very particular line of questioning tonight, wither. What's it about? What, what, what are you dealing with behind the scenes? <laughs> what is going on with her? Uh, um, okay. Um, Alex, DM received. Thank you kindly. <laughs> oh, glazy. Oh. So my primary issue right now is homeless people. Oh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Monsieur. What's up, Monsieur? Um, uh, I would like them to have food and housing. I've been told anarchy can provide this somehow. Um, anarchy, anarchism won't. Anarchism is a methodology. It's a way of doing something. It's a lens of analysis. It's a it's a method of action. It's a way of organization. It isn't going to provide the housing directly. It will give you a tool to organize your local community to provide that housing. 
It's a way of looking at the world and understanding where the justification or lack thereof of claims of authority are. It's a way of looking at the world and understanding who is coercive, what is coercive, what is oppressive, who is oppressing, who is the oppressed. It is this lens of analysis that lends itself to you better in being able to better interpret the world around you and then engage in action to fix those problems you begin to find. So you already know uh, the, the houseless um, are, they need dealing with. It's a problem, right? Like it's, it, it's just, housing is a human right. It is a, uh, a fundamental uh, element within Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is one of those issues you've clearly already elucidated. You've, uh, you've managed to suss that out for yourself. All right. So what do you do about fixing it, right? This is where anarchism as an organizational methodology starts to come into play. Um, so anarchism will teach you how to organize a group heterarchically. It will teach you as, uh, how to, uh, engage in consensus decision-making. It will teach you how to engage in a, um, a collaborative project to better the world around you in some way, shape or form, right? It's, it is not specific. You can utilize it for setting up a community library, um, a, a food bank, um, a shared internet, uh, a coffee shop, a uh, workers co-op shop, a, a hacker space, all of these things, anarchism can lend itself to organizing and making sure, or at least helping to ensure that there is no singular entity or person that rises to a position of power, co-ops that power, and then degrades the process as a whole. <sighs> um night um no it is a solution unto itself uh monica it just <sighs> for hang on monica night um night i get to take the easy one out I get to take the, take the easy out on that one. There is no project of projects. So I don't get to decide that. I get to voice an opinion. I get to have a say. I get to have a vote. I get to engage in action that helps shape it. And that's what doing this does, by the way. Um, but anarchists say there is no project of projects because once you have uh, once you've taught people that they are autonomous entities and that you teach them and give them the tools of free association and mutual aid and distributed network topology or, uh, and these uh, these sorts of tools that come with anarchism what they do the mechanisms that they choose for themselves the ways that they go about it the prioritization that they arrange they they set for themselves is going to vary from group to group it's going to vary from place to place. The what that's that's the beauty of anarchism is because it isn't a top-down prescriptive set. It's a bottom-up subjective set. Means that if place A has needs one, two, three, four, five, and six, but place B has needs seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, that you won't necessarily see place B prioritizing one, two, three, four, five, six first because their needs are seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then they can order one, two, three, four, five, six, or six, five, two, one, three, four, or whatever they need to do. But given that bottom up hierarchical organizational structure that anarchism utilizes and builds itself off of, the place location and the needs of those peoples in that place become prioritized. And so there is no way for me to truly answer that question. And so I get a nice, I, I get a nice um, cop out. Um, me as a person, what I promote, I think the next step on the pathway, and I think we're sort of um, headed that direction, is sort of a syndicalist, uh, a, a recapturing of syndicalism. 
Um, I, I see us headed that way, a re-democratization of the workplace. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, syndicalism is just built off of the French syndicat, syndicat meaning trade union. Um, and so like, it's, it, it, it's, it's just, I, I think that's a good step in the right, in the correct direction, right? It's by far, I used to use this analogy all the time. The train station that we need to get to can't be reached from here. You have to change train stations multiple times to get to the destination that most of you want to be and I would like to be. So there is no direct route to where we're headed from here. But syndicalism is a nice step in the right direction. I did not redact it because I literally sat down from my workout. I was sweating my tits off when I first came here. Uh, sat down. Um, good night. Good night, Alex. Sleep well. Take care of yourself. It's, um... Oh, fuck me. Oh. There you go. Um... <clears throat> Syndicalism is basically a reordering of society around the trade union itself. If you want, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Alex. I have, I actually have a bit of a peck. I mean, they're not, you know, massive, but yeah, I do have peck, peck muscles as well. Um, Monsieur, uh, not today because I'm dealing with forearm strain. I'm dealing with some like tendinopathy in the uh, in the forearms. So, um, yeah. I mean, yay, Karina, yay. Um, yes, I've had my booster. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Non-binary. Mine kicked the shit out of me. My booster kicked the shit out of me. So yeah, you're not alone. Uh, Monica, I would counsel you to use anarchism rather than anarchy. Um, for a, oof, night. Congratulations. That's a solid score. Good on you. Um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, chuds, two, um, it actually does mean from a political science perspective, like anarchists do, we, we mean two different things when we say anarchy versus anarchism. Anarchy is sort of pre-theory, anarchism is theory forward. So anarchist uh, methodologies or a anarchy as far as hierarchical distributed um, decision-making processes existed pre-European um, theorists. Um, and we sort of just offhandedly reference that as anarchy, right? Within, anarch within the anarchist milieu, right? Anarchism and anar a a anarchism is born of anarchists, which is sort of the formalized theory that sprung out of the sort of enlightenment forward, that sort of thing. Um, and then also, like I said, the Chud thing, uh, most people, like most people have bought the um, propagandized definition of anarchy as chaos. And so you can sort of skirt that a little bit. It goes a long ways. Um, and I'm thrust brick. <laughs> Uh, night. It really depends who you speak to, but in formalized anarchist theory circles, to an extent, yes. But I cannot equivocally state that because, again, in the words of Emma Goldman, there is no uh, anarchis uh, anarchism isn't a philosophical monolith. It's a network of ideas, and we much prefer it that way. So, like, it's it's one of those things that 
for this space, we run a politically, a prescriptive political science space. And in that space, there are technical definitions that we do adhere to, but outside of this space, it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I mean, dig, it kind of is, but I don't care. I mean, that's, that's the truth of the matter when it comes down to it. Valerie, thanks for the follow. Um, all right, now, if there's anything I missed that I, I, I while I was knee deep in various explanations back and forth there. Um, it's akin to, but not exactly the same night. Um, all right. Uh, the Sikhs, the Sikhs need to, uh, <clears throat> I love the Sikhs. They're one of my favorite groups. But they did a thing recently. And they need... We need to... We need to chastise them for it. Uh, you mean the lynching at the, the Golden Temple, Marcus? Yes. Yes. They... Yeah. Some dude committed a sacrilege at the Golden Temple. Apparently he picked up some fucking special sword or something. Some magic fucking diamond encrusted sword. Like he, he touched a thing that you're not supposed to touch and did something or something bullshit, right? <sighs> They beat him to death. They beat him to death. The the adherents drug him away. Word spread quickly. And they just mobbed him. They just mobbed him. So. Yeah. Like, you, you have to understand. Like, there's so much context. Like, there's so much context. The, the, the Hindu Sikh, the, the genocide that was conducted against the Sikhs by the Hindus years ago, there's there's so much context to this. You have to understand, this is this is not isolated. This, this was not done in a vacuum. Um, but... Um, he rushed towards the scripture, jumped over the railing, trampled on a decorative cloth, picked up the sword, and then was overpowered by staff. <clears throat> this is this is what this this young man did. And the Sikh adherents, the 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 temple staff restrained him and pulled him away, um, but it was being streamed live on TV apparently. And so, like, evening prayers, word spread very, very fast. And the, the adherents, the pilgrims, well, they went to the location and beat him to death. Um... I, I legitimately cannot tell you that. I think probably, Caboose, probably. But I don't know for certain. Uh, Except I would expect that from the Catholics tech support. 
See, here's the thing. The Sikhs, we hold to a higher standard. Whether they like it or not. Whether we should or not. The Sikhs get held to a higher standard. Because they're generally better people when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, they've got a better track record of helping people. They've got a better track record of social involvement. They've got a better track record of humanitarian causes, right? Like, yeah, they got some fuck ups too. They're humans after all, but for better or for worse, the Sikh adherents at the golden temple gave into baser instincts and lynched a man for touching magic objects. That's by the way, because that's 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 what happened. He touched magic objects. <gasps> he he trampled the cloth. He stepped on the cloth. Some magic cloth. He stepped on it. He stepped on a magic cloth. He picked up the the diamond encrusted sword of whoever's. He he picked up a, a magic sword. Right, like this is this is dumb. This is dumb. A man was lynched. Because he stepped on a magic piece of fabric and picked up a magic sword. This is dumb. Yeah. And so there's fair criticism to be leveled here. And I think it needs leveling. I think it needs mentioning that the Sikhs, despite the fact that I know they're twitchy because of, you know, the literal genocide conducted against them by the, the, the Hindu nationalists of India. I, I get the context here. I, I do. I truly do. But you don't, you don't get to do this. This isn't, this is a very, very bad look. So it, 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 <sighs> yeah. Yeah. No free lynching cards. Basically it. Yeah. This happened at the Golden Temple, Corby. Uh, uh, India. India, if you don't know where the Golden Temple is. Also, a fair game theory analysis, Viva. Giving the Hindus more ammo is not a good idea either. <clears throat> um, no, the Quakers are way more peaceful. Panda? Um... The, the Quakers are way more peaceful than the Sikhs. No, that's, they're, not even, they're not even playing the same sport, let alone in the same league. Yeah, the Quakers are super fucking, like, pacifist. The, the Sikhs are fuck around and find out. Ah, uh, what about the bakers and candlestick makers? Uh, somebody had a question. I think it was, um, I don't, Monica? Monica. Yeah, I think Monica had a question or something. Uh, dig. Yeah, the, the Quakers are pacifists. Yeah. They're observant pacifists, I believe, would be how I would phrase it, at least. I mean, Crimson, to be fair, as I think it was Marcus pointed out, dude, the swords aren't for fucking show. Right, the, the Sikhs aren't like oh, like they're you know they'll always be extremists. The Sikhs are straight up fuck around and find out we'll stab you in the face. Like that's sort of the foundation of Sikhism. So, I think you may actually be misremembering or over-remembering um, the Quaker role in World War II to an extent um, there, Corby. Um, I would suggest you go looking for that again. Um, What's up, Dan? How's that? How's that beautiful? How's that beautiful accent of yours, Dan? Um, everybody, go follow Dan Cody. Um, what'd you guys do? What'd you get up to? You're 
Let's see. You're oh, this is yeah. It's the other side of the clock for you, basically. Um, how are you, Dan? How'd your stream go? I mean, my granddad told me lots of stuff too, but it doesn't mean it's true. That's that's a terrible bias that you're carrying forward, Corby. My grandpappy told me, so it must be true. I don't need to research it whatsoever. That's 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 how you end up with fucking people walking around going, I know the blacks are a problem. My grandpappy told me all sorts of shit. Right? Like that's dude, just because your granddad told you some shit doesn't mean it's true. Always double check and research for yourself. That's mm. Um, it was good. Hey, it chilled. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm dealing with um, forearm tendon. Uh, we don't call it tendonitis anymore. Apparently, we call it tendinopathy. Uh, forearm tendinopathy. So lifting is like um, fucking doing weights and shit right now is a pain in the ass. But I've just offloaded to like uh, core work and lower half leg workouts and stuff like that. And I'm doing uh, eccentric exercises and those sorts of things to uh, rehab the forearms. Um, trying to get them in shape for like getting back on a climbing wall and shit like that. Um, but you know, that's what it is. Fucking that's what it is. Engaging in athletics. Like if you're not 17, the fact of the matter is, is that if you're uh, like physically active to any extent, you're just constantly band-aiding shit, right? Like that's I, Yogi. I have no idea. I have no idea. Tendinosis is chronic. Tendinopathy is uh, what we used to call tendinitis. Um. Ooh, torn hamstrings, a motherfucker. Um. Are you first time only, Dan? Um, or are you like trying to get back into? Um. Let's see. Yeah, Karina, fair enough. Um, Nice. Hi, right, Dan. Rock on. Um, same here. I've been out of it for years. I've been out of it for years. Um, dig, I didn't wake up to shit for shit. I wake up... <coughs> one, my vehicle, my, my, my SUV dig is in, um, is in a garage. And two, I don't, di I don't wake up until, like, later. So... No, no, I didn't dig. Um, oh, but um, I always want to get into climbing wildfire. I mean, thank you, Jill. Don't don't just try climbing. Um, legitimately, like this is my this is my advice to you. Don't just go to a climbing gym and start climbing. You you'll like it. You'll be like, oh, this is kind of fun, and then you'll start doing it, and then you will rack up so many fucking injuries. Just, just climbing, right? Like that's, you have to have a solid foundational workout routine. Get your body in shape. Get your shoulders and your forearms and your biceps in shape. Get your body mechanic, your biomechanics in shape. Get your core toned, right? Like get that stuff done ahead of time because the beating it's going to take for climbing is, it's a hell of a thing. Yeah, uh, especially, oh my God, if you have, um, oh God, what's it called? What's it called? Oh God, a pulley, uh, a pulley injury in your fingers. Oh, like a grade two pulley injury in like your middle finger. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. You'll be climbing. You'll hear a ping. 
congratulations. That was the fucking tendon basically like peeling off of the uh, off of the what's called a pulley injury off your finger. It you don't you don't just trust me. Oh. Yeah, how's swimming as prep for climbing? I mean, it's good for your cardio. Um, so, I mean, I'd climb, but it's difficult to get my wheelchair up a cliff. Rockets. Rockets. Yeah. It's a way to go. Hey, Panda. Panda, you're a Quaker. Like, you're actually a Quaker. <clears throat> Can you find me anything on Quakers fighting in World War II? Please and thank you, Panda. Or do you happen to know anything off the top of your head? Because I'm certainly not finding much. Oh, wildfire. What are some good basic exercises to use before climb? Like certain stretches. Forearm stretches. Forearm stretches. Forearm stretches. Wildfire. Forearm stretches. Holy shit, forearm stretches. All right, so... This way. This way. Okay. This way. This way. Um, Forearm stretches. Thank you, Panda. <clears throat> um... Yeah, definitely forearm stretches. You're going to want to do shoulder, anything for rotator cuff. Look up rotator cuff stretches. You're going to want to do that because your rotator cuff is going to be used like a mofo. Um, and you will shred your rotator cuff if you're not careful. Um, yeah, you will you will, you will reach up, you'll lock off, and you'll fucking do one of these, and you'll just shred it. Yeah. So rotator cuff forearms thank you yeah it's the friends relief service this is this is exactly what i found too right so do you have any examples panda of quakers actually fighting in world war ii Yeah, because I know about the Friends Relief Service. Um, isn't that, um, what's his name? Non-binary. That's what's his name. Um, oh, God. Hey, Stellar. Um, yes, the guy from Hacksaw Ridge. Um, oh, and dig a bursa is the uh, it's an outer uh, membrane. Um, it's 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 basically a membrane um, that has fluid in it. You have two. You have two. See, this is the thing. Quakers en masse did not fight because they're pacifists. This is my entire fucking point. You have two examples. Yes, Desmond Doss. No, Quakers were banned from being in the front lines during World War II. 
only uh, kind of support the Quakers could give was through relief service and the Friends Ambulance Service. Either that or they were conscientious objectors. Is there any sourcing on this whatsoever? This is just, uh, this is, okay, this is just a copy of one guy. This is copy of testimony from one guy. Like, this is my point. Quakers didn't fight in World War II. They didn't. One or two of them may have. But Quakers don't fight. That's not what they do. Yeah, this is too. Um, MMA Quaker. Yeah. And it would be arguable that they're not Quakers. I'm betting I could argue that. Panda, could I argue that? That by engaging, actually engaging in combat, they relinquish their claim to being Quakers? I indeed could. Yes. Quakers don't fight. It, that's, they're pacifists. Like, ext extraordinarily strict pacifists. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the one who said I could argue that is a Quaker, like is actually a Quaker, right? Like that's, that's why I'm consulting Panda repeatedly it's because Panda is in fact a Quaker. You could argue that and they won't fight you on it. <laughs> Solid diva. Uh, yeah, Quakers don't fight. Thank you, Foss. I don't know that off the top of my head. Panda, how do Quakers feel about the uh, self-defense? Like if I walked up and started punching a Quaker in the face, is this a Jesus turn the other cheek shit? Um, or is this a exemption? Yeah, what's 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 a what's company policy on this panda? <laughs> Bananarama, thanks for the follow, by the way. Quakers aren't anti-technology, by the way. Those of you like fucking, <laughs> hey Corey. Yeah. Yes, Caboose. Which, to, to the, you're all in the Anabaptist sects of uh, Christianity, for sure. You're discussing that, but, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, this is this is amazing. This is amazing. The um, Twitch partner channel, um, one of the Twitch partners got banned over the weekend. Um, when it comes to self-defense, the priority is defusement. However, if your life is legitimately in danger, example, there's a gun or knife involved, you prioritize the safety of others over yourself. So if that means being the sacri a sacrificial lamb, you do it. Thank you, Panda. Um, fair enough. So one of the Twitch partner channels got banned over the weekend. Um, <laughs> it was Prime Videos. As in Amazon Prime. One of Amazon's own in 
House channels caught a partner ban. <laughs> um, I'd show you the clip. But I can't. <laughs> it's in shared content if you want it. it. Just go to the go to it and scroll down. And it, it's it's the first reply. It's the first reply. Um you can see for yourself. <laughs> Somebody whipped out a titty. Somebody whipped out a titty. That's, that's fucking, yeah. Some holiday party bullshit for fucking Twitch Prime, uh, for Amazon Prime videos. And it's straight up, she whips a titty out. Yep. Oh, that was the first reply for you, Caboose? Hang on, let me, uh, let me get you the, the, the link to the, the one that you need then. Um... Uh, let's see. Copy link. There you go. There you go. It was a suggestion of titty. They teased the titty. <laughs> uh, oh, what else? Cody, sleep well, man. Take care of yourself. Thanks for the raid. Major Biden got replaced. What the fuck? He's my favorite. Uh, I mean, fuck Biden, fuck Trump, fuck presidents. But yeah, fuck Trump. Free the underboob. Um. Did everybody see the, um, Jesus Christ. All right, whatever. I see it, Karina. I'm not reading it. Um, so did everybody see the, uh, Chilean president? Actual leftist and a millennial. Crazy. Um, his quote was kind of epic, though. Right? Like, it was kind of an epic fucking quote. If um, if Chile is the birthplace of neoliberalism, it will also be its graveyard. I. 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 To put a finer point on it, Quakers are so pacifist that we don't use banks. We use credit unions because we can't risk any of our money being used for investment in the military industrial complex. Most Quakers will pick up spare change they drop near a bank. Fair enough. Um, hmm, what the command that tried to trigger was. Oh, well. Um, yeah. He's, uh, he's an interesting character.
So, I'm going to read you a tweet. I'm going to read you a tweet. You're, you're, you might have an aneurysm. You, you might, you might stroke out after I read you this tweet. Just, just know that. Like I'm, I'm giving you your, your fair warning here. Okay. This is dumb. This is dumb. My boyfriend got the jab. I did not. And I stopped having periods for four months immediately following his first dose. I'm 45 and no, I wasn't pregnant. If just being around someone vaxxed could have that impact on my reproductive system, I can't imagine the impact on a pregnant woman. <laughs> that ain't meant to pause. That's meant to stop. <laughs> Fucking a. Um. <laughs> I I can't, I can't. I'm with I'm with caboose. Um, found out one of my coworkers is anti-vax. Oof. Just make fun of them relentlessly, Caboose. Alex, I wish it were, but unfortunately, uh, what we've got from this profile and this account, um is God bless America, American flag emojis, patriot emoji. Like it's, it's, it's one of them, Alex. It's one of them. I wish it weren't, but it's, it's yeah. Ye and or haw. <laughs> I just let's see what else did I have oh actually good news everyone um this isn't a Futurama good news everyone no um the United States now has more non-religious people than evangelicals for the first time in our country's history the tide is turning the tide is turning. Evangelicals are on the downswing. Um, atheist, non-religious, non-identify, uh, non-identifiers are on the upswing. So, yeah, first, first, first time in our country's history. So, <laughs> Cricks, wrong one. No, not hail Satan. Just, just straight up secularism. Nonsense. Fair enough. It's it's a distinct possibility, actually. Nonsense. Uh. Oh, let's see. What else did I have? Oh no, uh, Grandpa. You're never gonna get away with it. You're never gonna get away from it. We can we can we can turn anything into a religion. As a people. Yeah, as a species, we can turn anything into a religion. We'll get there. Yeah. Now, how long till the downfall of the Abrahamics? I don't know. I'm <laughs> just trying to fit in with the kids. Um, I have something for that. Uh, Cricks. This was posted by the actual KFC Spanish uh, Twitter account. Yes, there's a, there's a Spanish KFC Twitter account. Um, this was posted by them the other day. Um, so f mark this under solid, solidly under fellow kids. <laughs>
Ah, uh, I actually know about that Akko. Yeah, the the Kentucky, uh, the the KFC in Japan for Christmas thing. Um, anarchism is gay. God, I hope so. Uh. Um. Oh, that reminds me. Okay, it's still there. Oh, good on you, Dig. Um, I had got a sandwich. Fucking practically jizzing from them. Uh, such a bland sandwich. Yeah, Excel. I mean, it's shit food. It's shit food for people with like, shit tastes. Oh, Pookie. Sweetheart, boo boo. I would I would invest some time and look up Nestor Machno and the Ukrainian Black Army and realize real quickly that anarchists aren't a pushover. But that's okay. I, I, I get I get your weekend warrior big hard dick thinks that it can just take some shit over. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway. Um, there's a by-election in the UK for parliamentary seat, which uh, had been held by the conservatives. I saw that non-binary. I saw that 300 fucking years. The conservatives held that seat and they fucking lost it because of the stupid Boris Johnson wine and cheese party scandal. Fucking, oh, that was so stupid. <laughs> Can I just play the follow sound? Uh, The 12 secret herbs and spices torture. Um, oh, Pookie. Is that a death threat? Because I think that's a death threat. Oh, you've managed to hold on to this account since December 1st. That's it. Oh, let's see. In a chat message. Uh, one of the elders at the Quaker meeting house I was to go to telling me um, when they first joined back in 1982, there's a Quaker owned insurance company called Friends Provident that ran the life insurance that they were, uh, they give your family 2000, uh, 20,000 and pick a random person from the phone book and mail them a check for 20,000. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's fascinating. Um, <laughs> Karina, interesting. That's interesting, Karina. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, Wilhelm, he's the idiot kid that decided to, like, get involved in a fucking protest and end up shooting somebody because he was too fucking dumb to stay home. Um. Kyle, friends with Stan and Cartman? <laughs> Kyle, after proclaiming wanting to be normal, is already on the TPUSA circuit. Yeah, of course. Fucking, of course. Yeah, no public. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Could you even define radical if you tried? You know what? I don't uh, fucking um, 
No, I can't. I can't. Actually, I have to remove you shortly. Um, can't bring you on air. Because you're a dummy who went and made a death threat. Um... I'm pro BLM. No, I just want to be normal. Uh, let me hang out with Charlie Kirk. Oh, that guy's throat. That guy's throat still. Um, let's see. What else did I have that I wanted to talk about? Um, no. Oh, bus kill. Um, I God, I hope that I, I'm going to keep an eye on bus kill actually and see if uh, that makes it as a project. Then we'll talk about it. Um, bouncy house castles have, uh, have killed like six children this year. Another 11 year old just died recently from bouncy house castle <laughs> fucking accidents. Uh, everybody see the, uh, the fucking, uh, retired Las Vegas, New Mexico police officer who punched out a postal worker because he disagreed with him on politics. And that was up on federal charges because he punched a fucking federal employee, like a fucking idiot. Um, and then the cops, for uh, the cops for the area roll up and tell him that uh, don't worry I don't uh, being a retired police officer I don't think you'll be going to jail okay yeah well he punched a fucking postal worker they don't take that shit lightly Being a retired bro. police officer, I don't think they'll, I don't think you're going to be going Honestly, to jail, bro, okay? just... However, federal investigators disagree. There's three of them. I love that, by the way. It's so fucking. That's such a fuck around and find out. Fucking, ah, eh, being a retired police officer, I don't think you'll be going to jail, okay? However, federal investigators disagree. <laughs> Jesus Christ. When the feds come fucking knocking, you know you done fucked up. Oh. video taken on December 3rd shows Gutierrez punch the postal worker in the face the first time as he turned around from reaching into his truck. Gutierrez told officers the postal worker was the one being threatening. So today he started getting in my face. I said, don't get in my face. Gutierrez and the postal worker told officers they had been arguing for a couple weeks over politics. Here, always giving each other about politics. Trump, he hates Trump. And, you know, the Biden thing, and I'm a Trump supporter. Surveillance video shows after the first punch, the two exchange words for about a minute. Gutierrez claims the postal worker was threatening his family, which the postal worker denies. Then video shows Gutierrez punch the postal worker in the face again. On his way down, he nails his head on the mail truck's bumper. He stands up only to have Gutierrez punch him in the face for a third and final time, knocking him out cold. In retrospect, I understand I probably should have walked away, but like the dude's just like setting me up, man. He's holding a package from me, then he's threatening my family, and then he's telling me, oh, it's a, like basically wanting me to assault him, you know what I mean? Brittany Bade, KRQE News 13. Did not. I was set up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's it's an adorable. <laughs> holding the package in a it's holding the package in a threatening manner. Um yeah. Yeah, I know. I know, right? Aka, this dumb motherfucker giving testimony against himself on the evening news. Uh <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> I know, right, Marcus? Fucking look what you made me do. You made me commit a federal crime. Oh. Yeah, I know, right, Viva? Um. <clears throat> I did not, Mizumi, and I don't know if I want to, quite frankly. Um, cops are always threatening to me. It's weird how I don't get to self-defense myself. Funny how that works, isn't it, Red? Yeah.
Oh. The 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 workout uh, endorphins are just now receding. Yeah, it's like two hours. I get a I get a good like, dude. I put in I put in the fucking work, right? Like an hour, just my core work, and like a basic leg routine for me is an hour, um, of like nonstop. Dude, it's rough. Um, so my endorphin load is quite uh, significant when I I first wrap up, and I can just sort of I can sort of feel it just receding. The tide is going out, as it were. Um. It is Mizumi. <laughs> um, it it is that um, this meme becomes more relevant every day. All right, is there anything else? Hey, dudes. When I see your name, dudes. The first thing I think of is, are you the do? But you're not. I don't think. Are you, fair dues? Are you the do? Um. <laughs> actually, I think he was like Hispanic or something. Nonsense. He was. He was. He was brownish. Um. The do with three O's. He's a guitar player. He's a. He's more than a guitar player. He's a musician. Um. He's a streamer and a musician and. Very good too. He's, he's an extraordinarily competent musician. Let's just put it that way. Um, but he doesn't show anything he uh, from like the the neck up. Um, so nobody really like knows who he is for the most part. Um, yeah, it's like, are you the do? Um, but no. Um, Wait, Corey, are you talking about the um, the uh, meatheads post? Um, Kai is the do. Yeah, I, I'm not a musician. Um, it is Aka. It yeah, the do will dress up as a schoolgirl from time to time and also troll people that way. Yeah, the do does a bunch of stuff. Um. You can catch him on Omegle. You can catch him on Twitch. You can catch him, catch him on YouTube. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me clear this. What'd you make, Crimson? What is that? What did you make for dinner, Crimson? I'm seeing, like, shrimp, maybe? Maybe a shrimp, some tofu. Is this like a, a teriyaki rice bowl sort of situation going on here, Crimson? Feels like one. Um, <sighs> oh, yeah, that was fucking, dude, that was a great, fu a great study. Um American adults currently in their 40s, 50s, and early 60s have more symptoms of depression and memory uh, and memory uh, and worse memory recall than older Americans did when they were the same age. No, Corey, if you're if you're looking at a, uh, an out of focus picture of my torso, then yeah, you're on you're on meatheads. Um, and then I know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah. Dude. Uh. So, yeah, I know, right? Oh, um, fucking depression and anxiety reduce memory recall, uh, dues. Like that's uh, mental health. Like overall mental health reduces uh, uh, memory recall. So it is, yeah. Like that's, it's, it's depression and anxiety. That's one of their side effects is bad memory. So, yeah. Hey, 
Oh, it's a good, it's a good tweet. <laughs> GL, sorry. Can you repeat that? I've forgotten already. Um, <laughs> capital realism be like, this is a good one. Ethan, uh, Ethan Couch, white, drunk drive while underage, kills four people, zero prison on the theory he was too rich to know better. This is affluenza. This is the affluenza kid. And then on the right, Rogel Aguerria Manderos, Latino, breaks fail while driving truck, kills four people, 110 years in prison on the theory he should have known better. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not getting into it, um, dues because I, I can't, I'm not allowed to speak with a certain, I, I can't speak with expertise on that, but I'm in that camp. Uh, I'm in that camp with your pharmacist as well. The, the, the low cholesterol diet, not good. Not, not good. Um, don't take my word for it, though. Listen to your doctor. Live your own life in no way, shape, or form. Yeah. <laughs> he should have known better. He knew he wasn't rich enough and wasn't also per uh, was also a person of color. It's fried rice with shrimp, tofu, broccoli, garlic, egg, hoisin, sriracha, turmeric, and a golden curry brick. Um, fair enough. Sounds good. Uh, so how to get rid of depression and anxiety so you have good memory? I got a couple ideas. But again, I can't talk about those ideas. Um, no, I didn't non-binary. I did not. What you got for me, though? Oh, this is one of my favorite studies, though. Um, Arya Ansari, lead author of the study. Um, this uh, human scientist at the Ohio State University. This is... Is I this is one of my just I never dealt with this shit and I, I feel sorry for anybody who did deal with this shit. Um, the study has an N of six thousand three hundred and twenty student uh, school uh, school age students. What they found: school uniforms do not improve childhood behavior. They do not reduce bullying. And um, students feel less of a, a sense of belonging to their school when uniforms are required. So school uniforms don't improve student behavior. They don't improve grades. They don't reduce bullying. And they make students feel alienated from their school. An N of 6,320 from a professor of human sciences at Ohio State University. All it is, is brainwashing. That's it. It's regimentation to strip your identity. That's all it is at the end of the day. Meanwhile, I had Cajun chicken, chorizo, and red lesser cheese, mac and cheese for dinner uh, uh, with some sriracha. I mean, that's a terrible panda. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? At my school, they said we had to wear clothes. Truly impressive. I know. Axel, literally 1984. Literally 1984. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I know, right? Uh... Holy shit, Buddhist. <clears throat> hey, Rai. Okay. 
So Buddhist had... Um, So, you know the story we were just talking about, how the white guy who, like, basically intentionally ran through four people, killed four people, and fucking got off with zero, uh, zero years because he was rich, and then the Latino dude who got 110 years because his brakes failed, um, and he should have known better, the prosecutor who prosecuted that case had a trial partner by the name of... Trevor Moritzky, who turned a brake shoe from the semi into a trophy. Good luck. It's a good luck. What's my least radical view most compatible with current power culture? Redemocratization of the workplace in the form of syndicalism. Keep in mind, I'm going to tell you to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going because fuck capitalism. It needs it needs absolutely torn down. Capitalism has missed the it, it, its time has evolved. It, we've evolved past its time. Right? Like this is the fact of the matter is, is that like it's uh, the holy book of fuck you, judge page a cab. All right. I'll get to defiance here in a second with her. Um <laughs> Capitalism's time has come much like feudalism's time came in Europe. Um, interestingly enough, the same um, the same sort of uh, impetus, the same sort of um, catalyst, not impetus, but catalyst, uh, spurned on the change in Europe as well. Um, the Black Plague um, reordered the labor market, as it were, and ushered in a new era of constitutional monarchism rather than feudalism. So it wouldn't be the first time in human history that an economic system began um, a reordering due to a pandemic. So. Hmm. <sighs> Who should we go with? Malatesto is a writer. He's gonna he's gonna be wordy. Wordy too. <laughs> Fucking anarchist. Jesus Christ, Bill. Uh, just trying to pick one, dude. Wither, we're getting down to the like we're I'm I'm Wither. Basically, I'm running out of statements that are arable. A lot of a, a lot of what uh, oh I'm sorry, Karina. Um, a lot of what this list engaged themselves in uh, <laughs> is not exactly arable. Um. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, here's one. Uh, non-binary reposted, I guess. Sorry. Shut up, Corey. <laughs> Love you. Um. Oh, God. We need to fucking... Dude, I need to teach you guys how to fix amp links. Uh Nice. This truck is no longer God damn. I hate fucking TikTok videos. When did this start happening? The 17th. Are they moving? Is my question. Like, are is how much of a... <laughs> Crimson. Um, hey, Moz. All right, <clears throat> wither. The pendulum is swinging. Swinging wither. The pendulum is swinging. Um, who saw, um, who's, who's fucking, who's, who's going on strike? Somebody's going on strike. Somebody's, somebody's shutting it down. Uh, CVS, uh, CVS pharmacy staff are walking out as well. The pendulum is swinging. All right, Wither, here you go. Yeah, I'll do this. I can't, I can't, I can't air my actual opinions on that one, Zippy. <clears throat> uh, Rami Sirianos is a Greek anarchist that was convicted of robbing a state-run auction house, the Organization for Public Property Management, uh, in Thessaloniki, Greece, that existed to auction seized vehicles. Okay. This is stolen items from the public, and he expropriated them um, for the good of the people. He was sentenced to eight years and eight months in prison, released on June 3rd, 2015, after serving three years in prison. First of all, I would like to clarify that whatever I will state is in no case any kind of apology. I do not recognize any political or moral legitimacy in, in this court that could motivate me to consider necessary an apology of mine to it. The entirety of my statement is public testimony of the political reasoning on which is my choice of expropriating the money gathered in the auction of ODDY on the 31st of January 2011 was based. Before referring to the facts concerning the particular choice of expropriation, there are some things that should be said in order to define the general circumstances where both the expropriation and this court are being placed. It can no longer be other than clear to anyone the fact that we're living in an era, era of turbulence. There's no need for someone to be a sociologist or financial analyst in order to understand that the social circumstance has since, uh, has since some time ago taken the character of an open conflict. 
The crackles brought uh, brought by the financial crisis of 2008 have outreached the sphere of the economy and crossed vertically through every aspect of social relations. The shining showcase of capitalism was turned into shivers, revealing behind it the rotting of an existentially bankrupt social regime, clinging to life with technical support. The fake well-being image of the previous decades, demystified along with the democratic illusions and the capitalist promises that accompanied it, is being replaced by an image of a dystopian future where fear and uncertainty prevail, while social coherence having its impermeability destroyed gives way to social polarization. In this explosive situation that is being constructed, where social peace looks like a fairy tale from the past, dominance throws away every mask and launches an all-out attack. Exploiting the general transitional phase of the social sense of the social scene declares a permanent state of emergency and adopts a polemic re rhetoric to anyone willing to listen. It's obvious that behind every declaration for more policing and every call for national unity hides a declaration of war. The new voice of power is dripping blood and its message is that it will stay alive at all costs. That a new cycle of profitable growth uh, and the capital accumulation will open marching on corpses. Uh, will be open marching on corpses. In the name of achieving the bloodthirsty growth, the dominant political and economic complex utilizes all means available. Politicians, journalists, judges, cops, entrepreneurs, prison guards, financial analysts, sociologists, in short, each and every individual faithful to the system place themselves with heart and mind into saving the empire of profit. While the political and financial... On. While the political and financial sharks organize the new terms of poverty through over-intensification of work, exterminating taxation and commercialization even in the, of the last trace of human life, the police state is being established with the blessings of the media. Public life is getting militarized with the omnipresent mercenaries of police, while new anti-terrorist laws, biological databases, and surveillance systems are being used for protection against the internal enemy that threatens the fragile social equilibrium. Repression is being lifted as the central axis of social uh, mechanics and broadens its targets. Every radical action is being criminalized, while persecutions of conscience, incarceration, and political pro uh, pogroms complete the dogma of zero tolerance. Every aspect of life is being attacked by the mechanical functions of the social regime that wraps it firmly into a new form of totalitarianism. Within this belligerent situation, every aspect of existence is being converted into a sometimes individual and sometimes collective battlefield. Every person is called to take a stand every minute. While the ones in power sweat to build the new totalitarian order, along with their minions and their social cannibalism, selfishness, and fascism are being consolidated. A whole galaxy of individual and collective practices of resistance is being developed in geometrical progress. In the city streets at night, inside hideouts and squatted public spaces, people with different experiences and starting points are getting coordinated while setting themselves into the multiform uh, procedure of social liberation. Relentless dynamic demonstrations, guerrilla attacks, self-organized solidarity structures, illegal wildcat strikes, collective expropriation of goods, sabotage, denial of payments, and occupations of public spaces and buildings, together with uncountable other practices, compose the entire mosaic of a revolutionary procedure in development. A community of people is being built upon the conscience of rebellion and proposes by word and acts that the bet... For the, for the liberation of the human experience from the degeneration of oppression is still on. An organic part of this community of people is the multiform anarchist movement into which I place myself. During my political trajectory, I have participated in various aspects of the anarchist movement, always seeking for thought and paths of action that would contribute in the best way to the subversive process. Through this course of mine, I have fumbled, and I keep on grasping at the different pieces of the mosaic of negations that make up the subversive anarchistic vision. A vision that maintained the clarity of the revolutionary perspective intact, both in the dark years of repression and the years of assimilation and conformity. This, that kept the unity between theory and action personal and political intact, rejecting the bourgeois capitalist logic which fragments the human existence into seemingly independent and separate fields. Carrying this precise awareness of the inseparable unity between perception and action, theory and daily life, I cannot imagine how I could perceive the social, uh, current social situation as oppressing and enslaving without fighting by all means for its subversion. 
How could I perceive the dominant relations as alienated and empty without trying to create a substantial expropriated relationship of solidarity with the people around me? How could I perceive waged labor as a blackmailing procedure of inequalities without acting towards individual and collective liberation? My choice to expropriate the money gathered in the ODDY auction makes up my individual answer in this last dilemma. Denying for myself the roles of both worker and boss, exploiter and exploited, I decided to put into active practice my opposition to waged labor, attacking a parasitic fence organization of the state. If someone wants to understand the motives behind this choice of mine, they only have to reflect upon their own daily life. The feeling of emptiness and encapsulation created by the repetitive routine of the working timetables and the prefixed routes, the isolation, boredom, loneliness, and insecurity that one feels left alone at home, exhausted. From the morning wake up to the night's consumption, life is getting crushed inside the belligerent situation of the waged blackmail. And if someone thinks that terms like belligerent situation are used to impress, they just need to consider even the most modest and conservative, uh, conservative statistics in relation to the cost of waged labor upon human life in order to confirm beyond any doubt the literalness of this expression. In Greece alone, one worker dies every three days. Globally, more than two million people die every year by some workplace accident. And there's no statistics, of course, about how many people suffer from depression, how many have been led to psychoactive pills or drugs, trying to fight the absence of meaning in the schizoid cycle of production and consumption. There are no statistics about the suicides that this constant, low-tension war has provoked. Nowadays, with labor being totally demystified, few are those who do not realize its true nature. People all over the world every day turn their will into action to act upon the nature of work, negating in total or just for some moments their role as human components within this globalized profit machine. Sabotage on production lines, destruction at workspaces, fake illnesses in order to avoid work. Stealing from bosses, deliberate underproductivity, expropriating raids upon accumulated wealth, all are aspects of the common disgust produced for work in anyone that has ever worked for even an hour in their lives. Practices of resistance within a procedure that degenerates the human existence into a sequence of automated acts and thoughts. So these, these are the motives of this act of mine. I am here to be judged as a thief by a court which under the disguise of morality and justice undertakes the task of legitimizing a social regime that systematically and ruthlessly robs the very existence of the people. By a court, the substantial existence of which is the preservation and the perpetuation of oppression and inequality. I'm here in order to be judged as a public danger in front of a justice which cons uh, constantly prefers to exhaust its cruelty and hatred upon every marginalized person, any outcast, any stranger. A justice whose mission is to place the last stone in the fortress of terror that dominance builds around itself, that criminalizes friendship and comradely, uh, comradely uh, relationships. Throwing, away heavy uh, throwing heavy condemnations at every fighting person, create new anti-terrorist laws that could encompass anyone, persecute people because of their political identity. I am standing here as an anarchist and revolutionary human against this justice of yours, against the totality of the dominant financial and political complex that is the definition of barbar uh, barbarity, which you express. I am standing here for my decision to release myself from this wretched and necrotic reality that is presented as moral and legal. Finally, I am standing here because I consciously choose to steal time from the production process and money from the state's machine in order to allocate them into the final destruction of both. With regards to this choice of mine, I declare myself strongly unrepentant. There you go. For those of you who don't know, it's Defiance, Anarchist Statements Before Judge and Jury. It's one of Wither's favorite books. Um, yeah. Dude, not a single one of those statements. Not a single one of those statements in that book. It's like, I'm sorry, Daddy Judge. Please forgive me. Every single one of those statements is, 
fuck you, fuck this court, fuck the state, do what you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> so in summary, fuck you all. Uh, and then they all clap. No. See, and Exel, here's the hilarity of it. All of these are recorded. These are all these are all transcripts from um, from court cases. Like this is this is not that happened territory. This is literally this all happened. This is all legal documentation. Maybe if my case went differently, I'd be in that book. <laughs> Kaiser, you'd have to pre prepare a, an epic statement. Um, but yeah. Ah, oh, the Greek anarchists. They're a lot. The Greek anarchists are, they're, they're a bunch. Um, actual, a few of them were, a few in the list were, a few in the list challenged the court to execute them. And then the court didn't. It's one in particular I'm thinking of. Um, shocker, radicals are dramatic and make good speeches. <laughs> um, yep. Oh, uh. All I'm here is I need to get my courthouse speech ready. I mean, I'd prefer you not to have to have one ready, Wither. I'd prefer you to have, like, decent OPSEC and not do... Oh, God. How, how can I do this? How can I do this? I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. I don't think I actually can. Don't get caught. That's, 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 yeah, beast. Do things smartly. Do things cleverly. Don't. Yeah, it takes apart. Get good. Right? Like, there's, there's no. There's no need for everybody to do the grandstanding. So, uh, Exol, there may or may not be something along those lines. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Anyway. So one of my favorite things is stealthy movements, Rev. I'm really good at it. I'm really fucking good at it. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite things is stealthy movements. Walking without f foot drop. Zippy's correct. Um... Yeah, walking while minimizing footfall and that sort of stuff and disappearing into the background and oh. Yep. Disappearing into the uh Who was I talking to recently? Oh that's who I was talking to. That's who I was talking to. Alright, I won't I won't name check that dude. Um there was a local though. A native, fucking native, and we were talking about the uh, the the water uh, the water department's map of all the washes and underground tunnels and sewer systems and all of that, and we were talking urban exploration. He was like, "Oh yeah, I've done my fair share too." And we started comparing notes and what we what we had used it for in our lives and stuff like that. And it was it was a good it was a fun little moment. It was a fun little moment. We're like, "Yes, it's exactly what's up." Um, yeah, Wither, um, uh, Wither, yeah, uh, here, for educational purposes, you walk incorrectly. I'll tell you that right now. You walk incorrectly, Wither. Um, if you want to walk silently, you are walking wrong. And you need to train yourself to walk differently to be able to walk silently or as close to silently as you possibly can get. You're actually walking in the like inverse way. 
Rev, I'm not. I bet you're not, Rev. You fucking sketchy hillbilly, you. I bet a bunch of you know this te uh, this technique and trick. But whither, I bet you are. I've been walking. Oh, yeah, because you got hippies. You got hippies, Rev. So you grew up barefoot. So Rev, see, Rev and I got it from the same place. We grew up barefoot. I guarantee this is what it's from. Rev grew up barefoot hippie shit. And this is, this. you walk differently that way. And so, yeah. Yeah, you're walking, you're walking the wrong way. Ball first. Yep. Um, Dippy nose. Yep. Ball first, not heel. Yeah, it's, it's all ball first, then heel. Ball first, then heel. Yeah, it's about when you're out in the world, whether. Also, running that way. Dude, running that way is a whole fucking thing. Um, running silently is... Yep, sweeping grass. Um, also, dark blues, not blacks. <laughs> Don't bite, Harry. Uh, yeah. Z Zippy, why are you still saying it? We all fucking know now. Like, Zippy, you've said, like, the same thing four times in a row or something. <laughs> are you okay, Zippy? Is, is Zippy stroking out? Um... How do you know if you're bad at it? Um, <laughs> Zippy Gober. <laughs> uh, walk without rhythm and it won't attract the worm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've 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 long scared people. Like that's that's one of those things. Um, I, I can, I can sneak up on you. Like, that's just one of those things. It's just, you'd be like, oh, what the fuck? You won't hear me. Um, I also, um, <laughs> good idea, Karina. Um, hey, L, how are you, L? beast fuck yeah that's um i can do it with the the collar because the jangly bits the the rings on a collar and stuff like that right uh -uh. Um, I'm dealing with like forearm tendinopathy. So my like weightlifting is sort of like having to be modified and rescheduled and shit like that. Right. Like I'm dealing with some shit on that front. Right. So I'm, I'm having to do like, um, modified like PT exercises and stuff like that to strengthen and like rehab the forearms and shit like that. So I hate any setback in my workout routine. Um, but the essence of athleticism, like especially over the age of 17, is constant setbacks in your workout routine due to injury. So it is what it is. Uh, Beast, at the sports, like I've got an entire roll of KT tape, like a roll, right? Um, in this instance, it's probably not the best idea. It would, It's better just to do like eccentric exercises and um, like rice bucket um supination and um the um yeah ex uh, it would be yeah it would be eccentric supination um exercises in a rice bucket that sort of thing um so yeah nice panda Uh, non-binary, mostly my left arm, not my right. I'm a righty. Um, so, nope. Oh, uh, Texas is starting to do a book ban push. 
uh, in public libraries, not just school libraries now? Uh, um, Yano, um, Yano County Library in Texas um, is uh, shutting down for three days this week to purge uh, library bo uh, books from the library in order to make sure that all of the material is appropriate. So. Excel, it's Texas. Although one of my one of my favorite things to happen is Governor Newsom in California saying he's going to start banning guns under the same uh, mechanism that Texas used to ban abortion. That like if it's okay to ban if it's okay to undermine bodily autonomy then clearly the Second Amendment shouldn't be any issue either. So California is going to end run some uh, firearms uh, bans uh, using the Texas method. New York's going to follow suit too? Oh, good. Um, interesting, Panda. Yeah, I'm, I'm adamantly pro-gun, but I also think turnabout is fair play. And I think uh, that, like, this is the fuck around and find out. Horse pace, we'll find out. I, th I think this is, the, if you're going to open the door to this sort of bullshit, then don't be surprised when this bullshit happens. Uh, Texas opened the door to it. So California's like, fuck it, yeah, let's do it. If we can start banning shit and just ignoring like constitutional issues and federal issues and laws and judicial uh, decisions and just enact shit, we're going to do it too. Yeah, let's just, if you want to break it, you know, it's, it's, it's all just a social agreement, right? Like we're all just sort of like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do it because this is the way we do it and we kind of agree. But if like some of these entities, like the state of California decides to stop playing the game, right? Like if Texas goes, yeah, well, we're not going to play the game. And then California goes, well, if they're not going to play the game, we're not going to play the game. Right? Like, all right. All right. Let's see how this plays out. This is just another step on the path to balkanization as far as I'm concerned. I can let it happen. Fucking idiots. Hey, resolution. Uh, Newsom literally tweeted out um, from uh, from the office of the governor of California. If states can shield their laws from review by federal courts, then California will use that authority to protect lives. We will work to create the ability for private citizens to sue a manufacturer, uh, anyone who manufactures, distributes or sells an assault weapon or ghost gun kit or parts in California. And this is directly from Newsom's Twitter account himself. Since SCOTUS is letting private citizens in Texas sue to stop abortion, if that's the precedent, then we'll let Californians sue those who put guns, uh, ghost guns and assault weapons on our street. If Texas can ban abortions and endanger lives, California can ban weapon, deadly weapons of war and save lives. Personally, I think the rhetoric is bullshit, but I love the infighting. I love the, I love the, the degradation of the system. Oh, a resolution. So many, so many emails. No, horse paste killer. No. Um, the official channel policy is guns for everyone but cops. 
Hey, Cassidy. Um, I'm exceedingly pro gun ownership, but I'm also pro find out, right? I fuck around and find out. I'm pro find out. If you fuck around and find out, well, then that's on you. Right? Like, I don't... Texas wants to remove women's bodily autonomy by this bullshit uh, crap. Then California is free to use the same mechanism to start banning guns. Right? Like... Fuck around and find out. If you open the door to these tactics and you authenticate them and allow them, then somebody's going to use it in a way that you don't approve of. So, I'm I'm pro find out. Um there it is. I'm like, where's my... Oh, let's see. Yeah, everybody gets guns, but cops. That's all. Ugh. Oh, hey. Oh, no, that was three days ago. I missed it. Aw. Oh, it was on Friday. Aw. Missed it on Friday. Um. December, um. December 17th, 1933. Um. Sexual contact between men was recriminalized in the USSR after being decriminalized in 1922 and in the wake of the 1917 revolution. Um, authorities claimed that homosexuality was the result of bourgeois Western and German fascist influence, and the official Soviet newspaper Pravda published an article which ended with the slogan, Destroy homosexuality and fascism will disappear. From the beginning of 1934, gay men were arrested in large numbers in major Russian cities and sent to gulags as a result. Um, and that concludes Kai's standard fuck tankies. Fuck, fuck authoritarian centralizing communism. Fuck Russia. Fuck the USSR. Fuck Stalin. Fuck Lenin. Fuck Marx, except for his critiques of capitalism. Those were accurate. I will never take those from him, but his, his solutions were stupid as stupid gets. Fuck the whole lot of them. Those patriarchal social conservative pricks who are constantly minimizing women who, by the way, Russia, it's basically legal to just beat the fuck out of your wife. Now, recently, a woman was awarded at the European like Human Rights Court or something that the Russian government had to compensate her because her husband, who chopped off both of her hands because reasons, um, Russia didn't even do shit about it. Right? Like it is it is functionally legal to beat your wife to death in Russia these days because they decriminalized um, uh, um, domestic abuse. Right? Just just fuck the lot of them. And fuck China and the CCP and their dengist bullshit and all that crap. Yep, red. Horse paste. It's because I'm a student of history and a well-studied anarchist, and I can cite the incidents of, like, Lenin ordering the artillery shelling of the Moscow Anarchist Club in 1917 and the wholesale machine gunning of anarchists in the streets. And then need we even mention Kronstadt, where a bunch of fucking workers are like, hey, can we control our own, like, our own labor and uh, benefit from the fruits of our own labor? And Russia was like, or the USSR was like, hey, can we see you in 
the woods outside your town. Two thousand of them dead. Right? Like, fucked a lot of them. I, I have no time in my world for getting shot in the back of the head in the middle of the revolution. Right? Like, mm. Some people are going to lose their mind if they hear about Turing. Oh, we've covered we've covered Alan before. And fuck the British government for that one as well. So. <laughs> Duck, basically. Yeah, got enough to worry about with the and prims <laughs> hitting us with rocks whenever we sleep. Um, oh, tech support. We just went through like some of Turing's contributions to modern computing, uh, mathematics, cryptography, and just uh, the overall benefit to the war effort that Alan Turing brought. And then the absolute travesty I don't really use Twitter much, Monica. I, the only thing you'll get off of me from Twitter is an announcement the show is going live. Kai's Things, at Kai's Things, K-A-I-S, Things. Um, that's all of my stuff. Uh, go to Kai'sThings.com, K-A-I-S, Things.com. That's the website. You'll catch all the stuff there. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, Cassidy, eh, nothing, 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 like, worth calling out, Cassidy, I don't think. Um, but yeah, we, we basically ran through like the, yeah, we ran through the chemical castration, the sentence from court, the suicide, which may or may not be suicide. We, we, I just did the whole Alan Turing story basically one afternoon, one evening. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, anybody from it fucking Alan Turing, if you're gay and you're in it, dude, Alan Turing is, you know, <laughs> he's one of them. He's one of them. Um, so, yeah. We're doing it. <clears throat> Puddle. Let me tell you the story about how anarchists got kicked out of the first international. Basically, Mik Mikhail Bakunin, um, was a, well, let's just say he liked to spar with Karl Marx. Bakunin and Marx knew each other. They would engage with one another. So here is, here is Bakunin on Marx. This is what got us kicked out of the First International and turned away uh, or not invited to the Second International. As, as anarchists, as a, as a milieu, as a community. Marx is an authoritarian and centralizing communist. He wants what we want, the triumph of economic and social equality, but he wants it in the state through the state power, through the dictatorship of a very strong and, so to say, despotic provisional government that is by the negation of liberty. His economic ideal is the state as the sole owner of land and of all kinds of capital, cultivating the land under the management of state engineers and controlling all industrial and commercial associations with state capital. We want the same triumph of economic and social equality through the abolition of the state and all that passes by the name of law, which in our view is the permanent negation of human rights. We want the reconstruction of society and the unification of mankind to be achieved, not from above downwards by any sort of authority nor by socialist officials, engineers, and other accredited men of learning, but from below upwards by the free federation of all kinds of workers' associations liberated from the yoke of the state. So there you go. Straight from Bakunin. Um, I would answer, uh, I would addend to that, um, that there is no project of projects for anarchists. We, um, be due to the, de uh, the distributed nature of our topology and the free associative mutual aid groups that we form, um, there is no overarching project like there is with communism. 
So we would ascribe to no project of projects in addition to that. But generally speaking, what anarchists are looking for is collapsing down of unjust hierarchical power structures, the elimination and removal of them there or wherever they may lie, and sort of the overall uh, equality and equity brought within society. Um, <clears throat> and what's up, Mr. Chef? I like Marx because he has a bushy beard. Look, Marx's critiques of capitalism, spot on. I will never, ever attempt to remove those from Marx. Um, he is spot the fuck on with his analysis of capitalism. It's his prescription for the solution that I think is completely wrong. So that's, that's me on Marx. Yeah. Um, I mean, we may or may not be able to answer them depending what they are, chef, but women's suffrage, black liberation, indigenous liberation, gay liberation. These are the things anarchists fight for, horse pace. We're, we're not exactly fans of white supremacists and um, we're kind of known for shit like Nazi punks fuck off. Um, anarchists are the ones who punch white supremacists usually. That's usually us. I would tell you not to but the fact of the matter is is that well there's a long standing anarchist tradition of not exactly exactly treating those types of people very well <laughs> um when the when the battle lines are drawn we um <clears throat> we're on the side of the oppressed Wither, wither, wither. That's amazing. That's an amazing little quote, wither. Love it. Kind of crazy that they let Hassan back on Twitch. Like, I believe in restorative justice and stuff, but are we really supposed to just forget about his crimes against white people? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, God. Fox News Republican says that life under socialist rule can never make people rich. Is that correct? <laughs> Public self-crimes can't be atoned for. <laughs> yeah, first off, Swede's got the right answer. Like, what do you mean by rich? And then, two, why would you want to be rich? If I, if I could design a system which you were treated with equality and equity and that all of your base needs were met and that you were free to play rather than like be a wage laborer, isn't that the goal? Do you, do you really need three mega yachts and like 19 chateaus, right? Like it's sort of how do we define rich? Well, that's just... Those mega yachts fulfill me spiritually, says Wilhelm. <laughs> mega yachts are a problem. They gotta go. Um... A resolution, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I, I, I'm not going to do the, the, the like the, the, the weird anarchist divide that exists there. Um, you'll be fine. They're perfectly like they, you, you will get the books. You will get the books. So no worries there.
I would a resolution. I would say use um, little black cart or um, firestorm uh, firestorm co-op first over AK press. If if I were to make a, rec a recommendation for you, resolution, I would say we start with little black cart and then firestorm co-op. Um, but what little black cart is like straight up hardcore Bay Area anarchists um, that set up like a bookshop. Um, and then firestorm is a queer anarchist collective that runs an art space in South Carolina, North Carolina, one of the Carolinas. I was fucking, I think it's South Carolina. Um, it runs a queer anarchist, uh, co uh, collective space that has a, a bookstore and an art space and that sort of thing. Um, so I, I would, I would point you to little black Heart and then firestorm first. Um, before AK Press. If you can't find it anywhere else, um, firestorm.coop um, if you're looking for Firestorm's website. So, yeah. Those are my two preferred providers um, for anarchistic literature and that sort of thing, but occasionally you can't find, I find something at either. And so I, you know, Source where you got a source. Um, but yeah. Um, hor yeah, horse paste. Like, no, this this community, which uh, I don't know what we number in now, like active Discord members. Like, I, it's, dude, we're, it's not a small community. I started this as just a fucking, like, dude screaming in the void sort of project, right? It's grown way more than I ever thought it would. Um, <clears throat> Oh, Buddhist. I mean, how would I not end up being? Um, anyway, um, <laughs> that alone is an ideology. Vice into virtue. That that alone is an ideological method of uh, analysis. Congratulations. It's just, you're 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 not escaping it. Um, so it's, you know, sorry, my man, but yeah, no, we've got, dude, we've got people everywhere at this point. Same logic as I don't take sides in politics. Oh God. I wish my forearms didn't hurt. Fucking dude. I just want to get a nice pump on. Idaho, oh maybe it's so difficult. That's that's a metric that's difficult to actually measure. Which state is the most racist? Dig Utah. I, ooh. I'm going to go with Montana. I'm going to go with Montana. It's just, it's just, I, I've got, it's, there's nothing. It's just, just gut, just gut. Like on the ground level racism, I'm going with Montana. Cassie's going with Mississippi. See, I just, you know, yeah. I know like the defaults are going to be the, the, the deep South. That's where most people are going to land. But, um, Oregon. Hey, no worries, Swede. Good. Oh God, good luck, Swede. Um, Oregon actually constitutionally kicked black people out of their state. Nobody else did that. So I mean, you know, I mean, there's there's an argument to be made there. Uh, you nominate DC for being the seat of the federal government. There. I'd argue New York then. It's the, the economic hub. Despite New York seemingly a, a melting pot.
Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Wither. My spiritual practice requires that I have yachts full of soda and fruit punch to satiate and satisfy the thirst of the gods. This is as my ancestors have told me tends to the, to the divine of the seas so that there are tides that... Uh, so their tides don't take over a $20 billion mansion on the coast side of a cliff hanging. At least once a month, I find I must raid, expropriate the cola factories for the gods. Uh, but as I've tried to feed my peasants, the gods have grown enraged with me. So now I must pay double of their shares in the ritual soda dispensing to the gods. Please save me. Uh, good impromptu write, uh, writing exercise there. Uh, no. Monica, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily put like, if it goes in shared content, it doesn't necessarily just end up on the air. Like that's just, you know, you, if you want me to actually address something, then you need to tell me to otherwise. Yeah. Cause beast, uh, beast fucking a wither tagged me and told me, look, um, yeah, I saw it. Like I, I know pan hub fucking it's like the, the pansexual, but it's all pans. Yeah. It'd be better if that were actually, hang on. Is Panhub a website? Panhub.com. See, they should have just bought the Panhub.com. Uh, um, yeah. They want 4000 for panhub.com. $4,295. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just go for panhub.gay. Just go for panhub.gay. <laughs> that's that's what you do. Panhub.gay. Six bucks a year. Um. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cupcake. Uh. Got a name cheap. Namecheap.com. Monica. I mean, that's not going to get you a website. It'll get you a domain. But. Oh. Uh. Fair enough, Monica. She's having fun actually reading chat. I don't need to. Actually do anything for once. Um, all right, let's see. Hmm. Oh God. Oh God. Um, I 
I know it's lad Bible, but it is actually a thing. Like, like this is a. I just. Um. Yeah, it kind of looks that way. I see it. I see it, Geo. I see what you're seeing. Uh, I, no. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I, I mean, look, I'll give you Maduro. Um, for sure. Um, he, he was the, quote, brotherly leader of, what was it, the great socialist people, Libyan, Arab, jim, um, um, uh, something or other. I forget the rest of it. Um, for sure. Um, he, he, um, he, he had, he had socialistic tendencies for sure. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll even, I'll go a little on fucking, uh, on, on, uh, Gaddafi. Saddam, no, I'm not, I'm not going that far, but both of them like, yeah, that's, that's the word. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say fucking whatever that, uh, I have fucking, although I think you're missing, you may be missing some eyes. Um, fair GL it's fair it's fair it's fair um in either case um it's really weird doing this stream and not having me in my head like on this I don't think I could do this without like I've been doing this for so long now with like instant feedback it's very weird when I remove them um but again anarchist not socialist um and Soch would be fine but the position of Gaddafi Saddam uh, Saddam Gaddafi uh, Assad um any of these douchebags would be eliminated because under an and Soch system there is no room for uh, our great leader as it were under anarchism so not a fan no I don't like chef anarchist Fuck Gaddafi, fuck Saddam, fuck Assad, fuck George Washington, fuck all of them. All right? Like the anarchist. No rulers. Right? Like it's literally in the name. And without Arcos rulers, a ruler. Right? The whole foundation of this is I don't like, approve of, or find that an acceptable solution. Which, by the way, they never are. <sighs> oh, Kvass. Um, I was tagged somewhere. Thoughts on how we fight back against the appropriation of social struggles by corporation and the liberal establishment. Yeah, just, um, f and fuck the horse camel they rode in on. <laughs> um, yeah, dual power structures. Uh, puddle. Yeah, dual power structures. Fucking, like, you need, um, you, you need actual grassroots dual power structures, right? Like, that's, that's where you need, that's where that comes into play. Um, if you have a top-down organizational structure and like a national level, that's easily captured. If you've got a thousand different ground-up hierarchical organizations that are providing needs and services and goods and whatever 
um, to the proletariat, to the populace, to the people, um, that is far, far more difficult to capture. Um, and Cointel Pro. So, there you go. What the fuck is national anarchism? Oh, it's right-wing bullshit with racial separatism. It's so fucking not anarchism at all. It's some pole ball shit. Oh, it's neo-fascism. It's a subsection of neo-fascism. Yeah, racial separatism, racial nationalism, ethno-nationalism, and racial puritism. This, this isn't... In what way is this... How is this anarchist? Yeah, national anarchism is considered by anarchists as a rebranding of fascism and an oxymoron due to the inherent contradiction of anarchist philosophy of anti-fascism. Right? Like, it's not a thing. It's like national socialism being socialist. It's just not a thing. Caboose. It is, isn't it? It really is. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea is super democratic, I hear. Yeah. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, uh, what was that? What was that? What was that twat whistles fucking? Uh, where is that? I have that. Yes, there it is. Did everybody know that Joe Manchin, um, fucking douchebag that he is? Um, let's see. Hang on. There we go. Joe Manchin's daughter is responsible near directly for the cost of EpiPens being what they are. So, like, you know, fuck Joe Manchin, the, you know, all of his coal barren West Virginia bullshit fucking muddling up. Yeah, yeah, but his daughter is legitimately responsible for, like, the price hike. Um, yeah, no, it totally runs in the family. Um, hey, Rev, yeah, I knew about that. Um, his daughter is this is she, girl boss fucking feminism in action, yo. Um, she, she straight up, by the way, like she gets that energy. Um, she was the first CEO, uh, first female CEO of a large pharmaceutical company, only one of 18 women to run a Fortune 500 corporation. She was named one of uh, Fortune magazine's 50 most powerful women in business globally. Right? Like, she's, she's got that fucking girl boss energy. Um, so, like, she was... Um, okay, so she was CEO of Mylan, Mylan which is uh, the EpiPen manufacturer. Like, the actual device manufacturer. Um, the only competition to them was Pfizer. She convinced, and we know this for a fact, she helped convince the CEO of Pfizer um, because part of a, a, a lawsuit that happened, we have the emails, um, to divest from the EpiPen competitor, giving Mylan the monopoly, allowing the company to raise the prices without any competitive curb. Pfizer then acquired King Pharmaceuticals, the company that made the epinephrine that goes into the EpiPen. So Pfizer divested themselves from the competition of the EpiPen marketplace and then 
invested in the supply line for the epinephrine that goes into the EpiPen. Mylan, being the only remaining manufacturer of the EpiPens, sources from uh, sources from Pfizer and uh, upstream from King Pharmaceuticals, the epinephrine. And, oh, let's see. In 2007, when Mylan first got the rights to the EpiPen, a two-pack cost less retail than $100. After this cunt cut the deal with Pfizer, the price increased to more than $600. The EpiPen, just FYI, costs literally $2 to make, uh, including the drug. Um, and, oh, um, FYI, just, just an aside, just, just, in a fun, in a, just a fun little aside, after, after the price hike occurred... Gail Connolly Manchin, you know, uh, Joe Manchin's wife, lobbied for federal legislation requiring schools to have EpiPens on site. So Pfizer's had to settle uh, a, a lawsuit on price fixing on this case. Uh, Mylan is undergoing uh, uh, current le uh, le legal processes as a result. Um, the, the his his cunt of a daughter stepped down from Mylan last year amid criticisms of the unconscionable price increases. Also, fun fact. Um, Four years ago, while she was still at the helm, Mylan was fined $465 million for Medicaid fraud. You know, hashtag you go girl, girl boss, girl power. Um, oh, her, her golden parachute, $37.6 million, Aka. Her golden parachute was 37.6. Yeah. It's exactly Slay Queen. <sighs> that won't even cover her second yacht. Uh. Not mine, I am too. Anything over, I'd go as high as 10 million. I could be convinced to go as high as 10 million. Anything over 10 million, 100% tax. Like, I, 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 yeah, I could go as high as 10. I, you could probably convince me down to five or three, five or 2.5, something like that. But that's a little bit of a stretch. Like, you know, yeah. Like. Everything over 10, you just, sorry. Um, at the end of the year, we'll give you a plaque. Like, congratulations, you won capitalism this year. Right? We'll keep score. Like, we can we can keep score for you um, if that's what it's about. Right? But you don't get the resources. That's just... Yeah, turn into sport with rankings and yeah, participation trophies. Exactly. Name a dog park after you. Exactly. Like, I, I, I. Yeah, it's the good boy award. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm right there with it. I call Warren Buffett. Um, I call the South African uh, apartheid criminal. Um. Uh, the richest, uh, the richest African American in the U.S. history is a white guy. You know that's not like, you know that's like that tracks, right? Like that's spiritually track. Basically, no, that tracks. Yeah, no, that tracks. It, it, it fucking, it spiritually tracks with this country, right? Like that's straight up. 
the richest African American ever in the history of this country is a white dude whose daddy owned a fucking apartheid gem mine who uses child labor to dig up fucking some of the dirtiest bullshit possible. Yeah. Elon Musk does not try his best to save humanity, you schmuck. Holy shit. Like, dude, don't, like, yeah, fucking press X to doubt. Holy shit, man. Come on. Come on. He's not trying to save humanity. Holy shit, man. Nice, Monica. Congratulations. Oh, shit. Somebody's getting timed out. Uh, well, since he's new, I'll tell him what's up. Um, fucking chef. Yeah, Mr. Chef 06. You're about to be timed out for uh, 10 minutes. Just FYI. A community, re uh, a, a community member has spent 30,000 channel points to time you out for 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, good luck. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Monica. Um, yeah, well, all of you who fucking are asking him questions, he can't answer. He's been timed out by tech support. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's just how that's going to go. Um, Voted off the island for standing Musk. I mean, he'd be banned outright on Ninja's channel. Um, fucking CIM, CMYK Ninja, um, uh, like literally would ban him just for mentioning him. Oops, wrong one entirely. Um, all right, load that. There we go. Yeah, Caboose. Yeah, Ninja used to work with him, like, up close and personal. Yeah. Like, one-on-one -on -one sort of situation. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Ninja's fucking... He's got an auto ban on his channel. You type Elon in chat, auto ban, hundred percent. Like I don't, I don't know if he's ever, um, I don't know if he's ever put a warning finally on it, but for a while it was just an auto ban. You mention Elon, you're gone. Does everyone want to see Zippy's uh, adorable socks here? Here's Zippy's adorable socks. I can't stand those toe socks. Get them off my toes. Can't, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, let's see, was there anything else that I wanted to talk about? Yeah, Cassie, it's, it's weird. about tabby socks though I, I don't I don't what are tabby socks oh the no no I can I couldn't I couldn't do those the split style socks no those wouldn't work for me either oh uh caboose that's an infrared um uh <laughs> uh it's an infrared uh like 
light projector um, for um, like physical therapy stuff. Um, so yeah, it's 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 essentially like a heating pad, but with infrared light instead. So it penetrates through the skin. Um, yeah, um, it, Wilhelm, it does, uh, it works better than a lot of stuff. It works better than a lot of stuff. Um, I find it works best in concert with other stuff, but, um, it does work. It does in fact work. I got it when I first injured my ankle. Um, and it does penetrate. So, yeah. No, Corey, no, no, not that. That would be UV. That would be ultraviolet. Um, That's... Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just yes, be they sure will, to edit Aka. it out. For sure. Anyways, for as sure. I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Um, Crimson, your points came back to you anyway. So, uh, I mean, no, Cassie, I did not. <laughs> I'll get right on that dig. Um, Yeah, that's my favorite tech support. That's my favorite part about Tesla, uh, about uh, Elon, is the fact that he bought the title of founder at Tesla from uh, Tesla from the two founders of Tesla. That is my favorite part. He is such a raging narcissist that when he bought the company, he specifically bought the rights to call himself founder, even though he didn't found the company. Like, how how insane do you have to be? To be like, I need people to call me the founder of this company. Yeah, but you didn't found it. You bought it. Right? Like, how how much of a narcissist do you have to be to do that? Like, everybody knows you're not the founder. Um, I, I, wish, I wish Elon Stans would finally understand he's not going to fuck them. Um... I mean, none of the heroes in Atlas Shrugged. Uh, none of the heroes in Atlas Shrugged are heroes. They're dystopian villains because Ayn Rand is a psychopath, and her worldview was perverted and demented at best. So, yeah. What's up, Dev? Um. <laughs> then he stole Eberhard's car and put it in orbit. Oh, fucking. Yeah, I, I just, like, I, I don't understand how people don't understand this about fucking Elon Musk. Right? Like, he did, he did one thing. Like, he made one thing in his life. Right? Like, he, he did some of the work behind X.com. Not PayPal. Not PayPal. X.com. Right? Like, he did, he did some of the work behind X.com. Not much. Not a whole lot. But some. 
And like he has been rolling daddy's money and rolling in uh, um, venture capitalist money into the next project, into the next set of subsidies for decades now. Right? Like this motherfucker doesn't create shit. He doesn't build shit. He fucking just goes, you know, it'd be great is if we did this. And then a bunch of venture capitalists pay a bunch of actually talented, actually intelligent, actually smart people on behalf of Elon Musk. So he gets to take the credit. Meanwhile, the real mathematicians, the real engineers, the real scientists, the real technologists, the real fabricators, the real creators do all of the work. And Elon Musk sits, sits by and fucking gets credit for it. How, do you, how dumb do you have to be to fall for this shtick? Like, this guy's a fraud. Elon built his rocket in a cave under terrorist watch. Uh, he's a fucking hype man. He is. Um, and 90, yeah. And 90% of the time, the things he proposes have been thought by other people. You know what? Um, so the exact same as Steve jobs. You know what? I will, I will fucking yes, yes, yes. But difference, one difference. I will grant Steve jobs, right? Steve Jobs was the right guy for Wozniak at the right time. Wozniak is a certified genius. Wozniak is goddamn big dick swinging genius motherfucker. No bones about it. Motherfucker building a PC from the ground up in his garage sort of shit. Woz is the real deal. But Woz would have been nobody without Jobs. Was needed somebody like Steve Jobs to be like, you know what? I can go out there and sell this shit. I can talk to these people for you, right? I, I, so Was needed a, a job, a Steve Jobs to some extent or another to, to finish that package. Was was that introverted garage technician. He, he was that dude. He needed somebody to get out there and be the face of it. Um, so there's at least a beneficial symbiotic relationship that occurred between the two of them. Musk, on the other hand, is just a parasite that attaches himself to whoever will benefit him the most. So there you go. I told my eight-year-old Musk is Eggman, not uh, Iron Man. I think he got it. Eggman, to his credit, like built some shit though, didn't he? Like, didn't didn't Eggman, like, actually do some stuff? Like, I don't even think Eggman. Like, I don't think that's a fair comparison to Eggman. But I'm not super in deep into the lore. Eggman tried to save the animals. Yeah, I know. I, I know that shtick. Like, public. Like, hey, Robotnik was amazing. Gave them mecha suits to protect them. Like, yeah, right. Like, okay. So Eggman built shit, right? Yeah, like he built everything. Okay. So like, yeah, like I. I that's not a fair comparison. <laughs> um. Yes, public. Did you get that from After Hours? Public. This feels like After Hours. Um. I mean, there's fucking, it, you know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I got it, too. That's where I got it, too. And yeah, there were non-flying creatures in those machines that he was destroying. Just woo. Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh. Eggman's a working class hero. <laughs> I mean, he's a little unhinged, but you know. Uh yeah, I definitely don't think Eggman is is a is a I miss after hours. Dude, I miss the OG cracked. Yeah, I miss that team. DOB, fucking Swaim, um, fucking oh, Katie, um, Soren, 
uh, Jack, who is in charge of them. Um, and yeah, I miss I miss the old school Cracked Crew. I know they've rebooted the the, the channel and there's like content happening, but it's not the same. The win the 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 moment has passed. Um. Tech support, sleep well. Yeah, like I don't. Sleep well, tech support. Take care of yourself. One time I looked up thigh high socks for men on eBay. I was not look not expecting the results I got. Thigh high sock. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh Rev, I see what you mean. <laughs> That is okay. I was like, what, 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 what possibly could have, could the results have been for like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd show you, but some of this is not stream safe. I mean, I can see that dude's package. Um, yeah, like I can see that dude's dick. Uh, <laughs> like that's hundred percent. Oh, I, I, Buddhists, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, you go searching for thigh high socks for men and you're like, that's a dick. Uh, nah, caboose. People are people are people are free to look it up themselves. Puka dick, you say. Puka just sitting there. What? I heard dick. What? I mean, just go to eBay and type fucking copy and paste thigh high socks for men here i will literally put put exactly what you need to okay there 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 is a link and what you need to copy and paste for the love of god people <laughs> this is not that complicated go to ebay.com and search for thigh high socks for men and you'll see what we're talking about Oh, wither. Um. And and if you're that super lazy, you can go to shared content and see an example. Uh, GL, I, I feel like some of these aren't necessarily really selling the socks. Hey, <laughs> Caboose. Yep, that's a penis, all right. Guys, are you, you say something? I was a little distracted. Ah, uh, some, some of these guys got really nice legs. They do. Um. Adios. Ah. <sighs> Oh, Puka. Oh, I didn't... Uh, Nomad, thank you for the follow. I don't know if you're still here. Um, a South African apartheid gem mine uh, puddle. 
So just think South Africa during the apartheid and think South African gem mine. There was, um, there was some little black boys in some fucked up mines digging some shit out with probably a dude cracking a whip, like literally. Yeah, an apartheid South, uh, South African apartheid gem mine. Yeah. Yeah, some sketchy shit went down there. I oh, forget his sister slash stepmom. Dude, his mom is fucking... His mom looks exactly like what you'd expect a fucking... Like, dude. Alright, here's... here's Dude, alright, you want to see his mom? His mom is straight up Cruella de Vil. His mom is straight up Cruella Deville. I'm not kidding you. Like this bitch is Cruella Deville. All right. Here's Elon Musk's. Like here's Elon Musk's, uh, Musk's mom. Yeah. Like actually, Karina. Here. Here she is. She's, she's straight up Cruella DeVille. Yeah. Here, here's, here's the full photo. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> and and if you're thinking like that's like just one, she's got no. This is this is how she likes to This is how she likes to like present herself. I can fix her. <laughs> I can fix her. Oh. Uh, hmm. Where is it? Here it is. Can someone please look in her basement and rescue the puppies? Seriously. She's a goddamn Disney villain. I, nonsense. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know nonsense. Um. <laughs> I bet they work. Fucking uh, crossbows. Um. Uh, <laughs> I do it just so I can tell Elon in the morning to call me dad. Um, buy your resolution. Take care of yourself. If you're going to bed, sleep well. If you're not, either way, I hope you're as well as you can be your resolution. Till next time. Um, so. Oh, God. I just saw non-binary. I saw that fucking joke. What do you call a fish with a bow tie? Sophisticated. I hate you non-binary. <laughs> Self-flagellation. Self-flagellation. <laughs> you need to you need to whip yourself for that one. Um Jesus Christ, that was bad. <laughs> oh, Where's Cave? I needed to write a fanfic with Elon's mom and a hundred furries. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Which would you rather fight? A hundred uh, kitten-sized furries or one horse-sized furry? <laughs> uh... Yeah. <laughs> 
screen at the kittens, may too. Um, beast, beast with the correct answer. Solid work. Horse sized. Wait, did you say fight? Um. <laughs> Yeah, 100 kittens. You just got to get in a kick rhythm. <laughs> this is nonsense. They might swarm you from behind, though. You never know. Um, uh, what am I going to eat tonight? <sighs> mm. Jeez. <laughs> Christ. All right. Nonsense. Uh, not nonsense. I'm sorry. Nonsense. I just attributed this joke to you. Uh, Non-binary. A skeleton walks into a bar, says, a bar uh, says, hey, bartender, I'll have one beer and a mop. For some reason, that sounded like exactly like something nonsense would fucking say. Um... Are we going to watch Alien Seed or what? Dude, 100%. I want to watch that movie. 100% I'm down. That movie, dude. Yeah, I'm down for Alien Seed. Estrella, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Nomad. I mean, not that your analysis like means something, but it means something. Right? Like, you, people's opinion matter, and thank you for the compliment. Um, I'll take it. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of the people who congregate um, in the community. Um, yeah. I, I like the tonality I've set for this community. Um, all right. What's the difference between a cop car and a porcupine? And porcupine has the bricks on the outside. Nice. Um, was hanging out with guinea pigs earlier. Hmm. Cooey. Um, they're actually really adorable and make mini pig sounds. So we, 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 they like to cuddle. Um, I'm <laughs> puddle. Um, I like Peruvian food and in Peruvian food, you have what's called cooey, which is roast guinea pig. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, oh, dig. Also, it helps that Dig and I bonded over a very shit uh, fucking burlesque show. Um. <laughs> Is that true, Beast? Is that actually true? Were guinea pigs the first domestic? I thought it was the goats or some shit. Interesting. First domesticated animal for food. What was the first? Uh, goats. It was goats. It looks like it was goats. Beast. Um. <laughs> Kitty pig just popping in the microwave. Um. Dig. Giddy goats. Uh, dig. They taste like pork. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Roast, like, spit roast fucking, like, whole roast guinea pig. Tastes like whole roast pork. It, it, it's... It, it, it is, it's, it's really freaky. It's really freaky. That, 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 that it lines up like that, but it does. Um, yeah. Um, the only place you're gonna find them is with Peruvians. Nobody else really eats guinea pigs. Um, and so like that's 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 who's down with the 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 guinea pigs. Like is the Peruvian. So seek seek out some guinea pigs, and um, you want um, cooey. Um, and if you're wondering, it's just C U Y, uh, C U Y. Um, here I'll, um, 
I mean, I suppose maybe trigger warning for somebody, fucking whatever. Um, Oh, if you think the head is a bit much here, here's an example of, dude, here's an example of fucking, all right, you ready? You ready? Bear, de deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Uh, and you know what? It's a common preparation. I'm not kidding you. Like putting, like putting them up on their haunches and putting something in their mouth like that and putting a hat on them is actually a, a kind of a Peruvian thing. Like it's, it's not, it's not the, that's not the only time you will see that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually kind of a thing. Um, so. <laughs> non-binary um they are cassidy they are of course the ones raised for food are um are treated or fed differently than the ones that are raised for pets and that sort of thing um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the allergen that you're dealing with um caboose it wouldn't wouldn't be a thing Jesus Christ, why is the end of that song? Just fuck it, I'll just skip it. Um, uh, it would not be a thing. <laughs> oh, cupcake. Oh, cupcake. You're gonna you're gonna freak some people out. You're gonna freak some people out with this one, cupcake. Rev, it's not hard at all. It's not hard. It is not difficult at all to raise uh, raise Kui. Um, yeah, uh, capybaras are a bit big. They're edible. Capybaras are edible. Everything's edible. Every but everything's edible. Just just everything's edible. Okay, that's the history of humanity and the culinary processes. Everything's edible, but um, there are th some things that are preferred and some things that are not, and so, yeah. So, <laughs> straight up, be right back to go eat a colorful frog. Um. And Rev, are there is there not a preparation method for those? Usually, there's a method for denaturing the uh, the poison, like because like I, I know like um, Hakarl, um, in in Icelandic tradition, the, the it's so um, the flesh is so ammoniated, um, for, uh, because the the shark literally urinates through its flesh through its skin. It's so ammoniated that it's toxic, but through the decomposition and rotting process, it actually breaks down the uh, the ammonia compounds and then becomes edible. It's a nightmare to eat, but it, it is edible. Um, so I'm thinking something along the lines of like Hakarl. Um, like it's got to be processable in some way, shape or form. Uh, nonsense. Your dad has amazing stories. Your, your stories about your dad are amazing nonsense. Um, 
My dad ate monkey brain when he was uh, fill in for a boxing match in China. Told me the whole story. It was pretty fucked. Yeah, because they crack it live. Oh, that's yeah. That back in the day and in China, the monkey brain. Yeah, that shit was fucked up. Um. All right. Speaking of food, I love the eighteen oh seven roti sans perelli. Uh, per, peril. Um, the daredevilish recipe calls for a tiny. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. Yes. Yes. Okay. The daredevilish recipe calls for a tiny warbler stuffed in a bunting, inserted into a lark, squeezed in a thrush, thrown in a quail, inserted into a lapwing, introduced to a plover, piled into a partridge, wormed into a woodcock, shoehorned into a teal, kicked into a guinea fowl, rammed inside a duck, shoved inside a chicken, jammed up in a pheasant, wedged deep inside a goose, lodged into a turkey. Yes. Uh, fucking Marcus with like a deep cut on that one, by the way. Um, and a partridge in a pear tree. Um, yep. Let him out and cracked him at the table. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Monkey brain as a dish is a fucked dish. Um, Eating live seafood is, I just, I'm laughing at Puka's. That's an entire ecosystem. Um, uh, fucking eating live seafood is also, f- uh, fucked as fuck and still done. Um, I have had, um, I've had the wiggly tentacles that the, the Koreans and the Japanese are a big fan of. Um, like literally like live chopped, uh, cephalopod t- tentacles and it goes on the plate and it's still like squirming and wiggling and shit. Um, I've had like bivalves that are shucked. Like, I mean, they were live moments. Like, literally, you know, you take an oyster and you shuck it. That thing was alive, like minutes. But I mean, an oyster is barely alive. Just so for 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 reference, oysters are alive. Like, moss is alive, right? Like, it's it's alive technically, but don't expect much from like from it. Um, <coughs> Uh, let's see. What else have I had that that's been in the live territory? Um, I've never done the snake heart. I've never been in like Vietnam or Thailand. That's generally where you do the snake heart. Um, uh, let's see. What else? Yeah, I think that's the extent of the sort of like live stuff that I've had. Yeah, plants. Plants. I mean, all most of the plants we eat are live. Fresh vegetables are still live. Yeah. Ugh, God, dig. I, I couldn't. I can't. I can't with the veganism. I just can't. I can go vegan for, like, most of my products. My food? No. No. Um... <laughs> oh, Karina, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, you love Balut. Nonsense. You fucking love Balut? You fucking weirdo? Uh, my my apologies to all of my Filipino brothers and sisters. Um, Dude, Balut is... I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm not good with eggs to start with. Um... For those of you that don't know, balut is um, fertilized traditionally duck egg. Um, it is it is traditionally duck egg. Uh, it is fertilized and generally in the fourteen day range is usually where it is. So there's 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 some like there's some bird in there, but it's not quite bird yet. Um. And you crack it, and there's like fluids, and some yolk, and some white, and some bird, and you throw some salt on it, and you eat it. Ugh. Can't. I can't. I'm not great with eggs to start with, and that that is just, I can't do it. <clears throat> it's the meatiest meat. <laughs> Uh, I did that tracks with nonsense. I'd expect him to munch on balut. Ate that. It's disgusting, says Viva. Um, 
yeah, dude, Balut is. I right, catch you later, can't. Um, yeah, Balut is. It, it's it's rough. It's rough. Uh, horse tartar. I don't think I've. No, I haven't had. I haven't had horse tartar, but I've had horse. Horse is horse is just sweeter red meat. Honestly, it, it's it's slightly sweeter. Um, but beyond that, it's just a really lean, sweet, unctuous red meat. Um, it's really not that weird. It doesn't taste weird. Um, you know, like most people expect gamey or something like that. It's it honestly, it's a really good meat. Um, oh Jesus nonsense. Yeah, we only view it as weird because we like horses. <laughs> um, anything producer? Yeah, exactly, Karina. Like I feel you on that. <coughs> Dude, Viva the beak for me is the weird part. The beak for me is the weird part. Also, the partially developed eye, uh, eyes. Um, but the beak for me, the feathers and the beak are the weirdest part of Balut for me, Viva. Um, Gator is so fucking good. It's the best chicken. Uh, Gator's fine. Gator's fine. Like most of you, it's it's kind of it's kind of reptilian. If you've had turtle before, if you've had gator before, if you've had snake before, it's 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 in that category. They all have a sort of like kind of a tinny note I'm going to go with. It's kind of metallic. Um, yeah. I mean, I know you're just tr like trolling a non X, uh, a um, Aon X, uh, but Civic Cat Coffee is the coffee bean that, after it has been eaten by the Civic Cat and passed through its digestive system and shat out the other end, and it carries a, a premium. People do, in fact, brew and drink Civic Cat feces for all intents and purposes. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, chicken feet are great. Um, of course it was. Of course it was the Korean that brought up chicken feet. Um, uh, <laughs> dude, Koreans do chicken feet right. Honestly, like Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia. Um, if y'all want, like, if you're hesitant on chicken feet and you're like, eh, Southeast Asia, they do chicken feet right. Yeah. That's that's who you want preparing your chicken feet. Japanese, Korean, Thai, Laotian, Vietnamese, even Philippines. Yeah. Um, I have not gotten around to kangaroo, Akka. I'm waiting till I go to Australia to have kangaroo. I don't want imported kangaroo. Cambodia would work too. Um, I don't want imported. Um, I don't want imported kangaroo. I want fresh kangaroo. So when I go to Australia, I'll have fucking. I'll I'll have some kangaroo there. Um, Fiva, no, absolutely not chicken feet. Nope, immediately throw up. Fascinating. Stephen Fry has said that has said that that coffee was his wedding present to Prince Philip. I too support telling a royal to drink shit. Yep. Eh, Kaiser, it's all, it is, but duly noted. Corey, this conversation is awful. Solid, solid work. Uh, what kind of whale, Akka? What kind of whale? <laughs> yeah, well. Welcome to geography with an American, Kaiser. We could call you all Chinese. I really fucking do a number. Um, 
Oh, okay. So it was an izakaya. So yeah, it was it was fucking just grilled meat. Um. Yeah, I can't imagine jellyfish. Jellyfish would have to be like a stew or something like that to really break down that connective tissue, I'd imagine. And then it would just dissolve into nothingness. Oh, bison's not an exotic meat dig. I bison is I don't eat beef, I eat bison. Bison's not exotic. I refuse. Bison's great. It's just it's just better beef. Oh, and they're not as fucking cuddly. You don't you don't feel bad about it. Um cows are cows are cute and cuddly and shit. And fucking bison, you're like, God damn, that thing's huge. It'll fucking murder me. It would. It would trample you to death. Um, so like, you're like, it, this is fair play, right? Um, elk is good. Yeah. I, I keep elk in the rotation. Puka. I've, I've, I've had, uh, swallows nest, um, bird's nest soup. Um, you, um, basically they taste of nothing. Um, bird's nest, bird's, uh, bird's nest soup tastes like nothing. It tastes like whatever. Here's here's the weird dichotomy with bird's nest soup. Um, whatever, the higher the grade of bird's nest soup, the less it tastes like it tastes like something. Because bird's nest soup, swallow's nest is graded by the cleanliness of the the nest and the the, the process of picking the hand picking that it has undergone uh, for the soup. So, like, the grading, basically, the higher up you go, the more you pay, the less it tastes like anything. And so, the lower the grade of bird's nest soup, the better it actually tastes. The more of the sea and sort of, uh, it, it, it sort of, it tastes like something. Um, yeah, it's a fascinating thing, actually. I'm being tagged somewhere. A teacher at Washington, D.C. elementary school has been placed on leave after asking her third grade students to reenact scenes from the Holocaust. Love it. Um, digging mass graves and pretending to be shooting victims. Lovely. Can't imagine why that would um, why that would go over poorly. Roast pigeon in China was pretty good. Uh, it's greasy like duck. Uh, pigeon is... It, people forget that pigeon was imported to the... Uh, pigeon is not native... To North America, every pigeon you have ever seen in your city or your countryside was imported. We brought them here. Um, AKA the rock dove, I believe is its other name. Um, Caboose, so pigeons are an invasive species? They are, actually. Um, so yeah, pigeons are, pigeons are just a really sort of rich, dark game meat when done correctly. Um, here. Why on earth would that be that set that way? Here is, um, here's, uh, here's pigeon breast. It's like red meat on a bird. <laughs> Seagulls are terrorists. I mean, obviously. Uh, I'm going to need about four, pi four more pigeons. I mean, there isn't a whole lot on them, admittedly. Uh, I love game meats, deer, moose, wild turkey. Must have been a wolf in a past life. There are at present more wild turkeys in North America than there were at the signing uh, d at the signing of the uh, Declaration of Independence. Um, the 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 hunting of wild turkeys by indigenous and the the settler population compared to the process of conservation leading up to today. There are more wild turkeys now than there were back in the day. Yeah. Um, deer too. Yeah, that I, I don't know the statistics on that one, uh, Rev, but that does not surprise me in the least. 
<laughs> I want to try an Ortolan, but it's illegal. Oh, you want you want to hide your shame from God himself, Akka? Um, actually, dig uh, bisons have resurged to quite an extent. We're not anywhere near their original numbers, but compared to where they were on the brink of extinction to now, we've actually done a really good job. Uh. Oh, was your bong frozen, Karina? Uh, I was in an elementary school play about the history of Portland. May I erase your all the video records of this? Um, 2020, they got off the endangered list. Nice. Uh, given the amount of disgust I felt after finding out what foie gras is, yes, I'd, I'd, I'd hide my shame. Aka, um, I don't like liver. I don't like liver, right? So like pate de liver. Um, you know, pat, uh, foie gras uh, is, despite the fact that it's super fatty, I still don't like the, the, the weird minerally taste to it. It's not a thing for me. So, um... V-E-A-L. Um, what about veal? <sighs> I mean, I don't... Look, I don't... I don't... I'm not really... Whatever. You know. You do you. It's the factory farming that I have a problem with. Um, <sighs> the classical means of produ producing veal? No. No, that's, that's, a, that's a step too far for Kai. Um, it's let's, let's not chain the baby cow to the ground and shit like that. Right. Like that's, it's a step too far. Um, but there is like suckling cow, like suckling pig, right? There is, there is room for that. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Like if you're okay with eating the adult animal, eat the young one. I don't care. It's, it's morally and ethically. It's the same. Like it's even less, it's even less. Um, I don't, yeah, see, I, I don't even, they don't even have a chance to suffer Karina in my opinion. Right. Um, yeah, like I, I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Just don't, don't fucking strap them to the ground and purposefully fucking torture them. Yeah. Yeah, Puka, basically, just kill it quick. Just don't make it suffer. Minimize the suffering and we're good. The, the time in which... It, it's... I, Kaiser, I kind of don't either. I kind of don't either. I'm kind of team people. I I th I think it's it's moralism, right? Like it's 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 a moralism, and that's ah, oh. it's sort of cringe. It's sort of cringe. Um. Yeah, caboose. I don't. Yeah, I don't really care about the animal death. It's the suffering that's the problem. Yeah, it, it's it's the treatment, the life, the suffering. Not so much the fact that we're gonna kill it, and eat it. I, I, I'm. Yeah, Kaiser. We can get canceled together. Um. I I. Like. I'm going to die. And my body is going to be consumed, right? Like whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm not at the, that style of the food, chip, hopefully, right? It's not going to be a wolf eating my liver for dinner or some shit like that, right? But I am not exempt from the food chain. It's just the microbiome that's going to get me. Um, so like at the end of the day, I will be food for other stuff. 
right? Like this is just, this is the nature of existence. It just is what it is. I mean, Akka, no, it's just a bad idea from a health standpoint. Yeah, Rev, I'm not doing any of that. The things that'll eat you are currently helping you digest food. You, one day you'll have you'll pay that debt. Exactly, Beast. Um. Night, Zippy. Sleep well. I I just can't. Yeah. Wait, what are you correcting? Uh. <sighs> well, but that's that's where I mean nomad um <laughs> I'm sort of renowned at this point for having a guy for everything. Right? Like I've I've exempted myself from a, a lot of that. Um So you know, I've got someone for elk, I've got somebody for my duck fat, I've got somebody for you know, hand diverse, diverse scallops and shit like that. Right. Like, yeah. Cause yeah, the factory farming is a problem. The factory farming is a goddamn ethical nightmare. But it takes time, energy, effort, resources, to to do that so most people don't have that option uh this stuff doesn't belong in sources did you not know that aka like, did you not? Apparently, Aka didn't know that. How is this fucking what kind of what kind of city dweller bullshit is that? Is this is this just shit that I was just too country to fucking? Am I is this is this shit that I'm just too country to fucking like? I don't understand like how the fuck y'all don't know this. Like, I mean, I grew up in Vermont. It's cow country. It's not your fault, Aka. It's somebody else's fault. Somebody fucked you up. Somebody, somebody did you a disservice. Um, yeah. Digital divide strikes again, right? Like, dude, this just, it's, it is city living, isn't it? This some, this some f Cassidy that, um, that to get milk, you have to keep the, the cow pregnant. I, Aka, Aka thought cows and goats just did that. Aka. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a reproductive class value. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, this is just, this is some, this is some shit that I'm just too country to not get. Uh, honestly, Aka, it's not your fault. I mean, at a certain point it is. Um, Metal. I was raised in Wisconsin, and I didn't know that. 
Oof. Wait, wait, where in Wisconsin? Like in the in the in the country or like in Madison? <laughs> I know Kaiser. I know. Axel, I'm from New York. Wait, what part of New York, Axel? Down or up? Upstate New York and downstate New York are two entirely different worlds. Downstate. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm from downstate New York. I can guarantee that a lot of people I grew up with still don't know this. Um, yeah. So, as well, that's you, Axel, you, you understand why that clarification needs made, right? Like, um, born in Milwaukee, raised in Kenosha. So, it's suburb and city. All right. Jesus, Rye. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just one of those things. I, I, you know, growing up in, uh, growing up in Vermont, dude. Like when I was, when I, when I lived in Vermont, um, there were more cows than people. There may still be. Um, it's just, that's just how it works. Um, so. Oh, Jesus, Marcus, the fucking Chick-fil-A ad really did fuck you up. Interesting. That's fascinating. Dude, we need a better educational system. <laughs> uh, Estrella, there needs to be a pregnancy to initiate the milking process. The milk, the lactation process can be elongated using a variety of techniques, but you don't get the lactation without initiating a, a, a pregnancy. So I appreciate the nuance and distinction and like detail uh, that you're trying to bring up and bring into it. Yeah. Yeah. You grew up thinking Lizzie Borden was common knowledge. I mean, it is. I mean, I fucking how? I don't know. I don't know. Fucking. I mean, I, I, dig like I, dig. I would get why Lizzie Borden isn't common knowledge in Las Vegas growing up, right? Growing up in New England, Lizzie Borden is just common knowledge to us, right? Fucking axe murdering her whole fucking family to death, right? But, like, I get why that would not be common knowledge out in these parts. Growing up in New England, though, we all know about it. Nick Jr. made Lizzie Borden jokes. Hmm, interesting. I had to explain the Donner party to someone once. That was awkward. <laughs> oh, good old Donner party. Um, Lizzie Borden got an axe and gave her mother the 40 wax. Yep. <sighs> Oh geez, we're doing it. I I I don't know the whole fucking thing off the top of my head. I don't know if I can complete it. Hold on. Um That's okay, there we go. Um uh, yeah, there we go. It is. Yeah. When, uh Lizzie Borden got an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. Um yeah. What's up, Klepto? This is a good lullaby. All the lullabies are fucked up. All the lullabies are fucked up. Um. There you go, Klepto. Just for, just for you. 
Just just pretend I'm doing some shit down here. I'm I'm fucking hang on, hang on. There you go, clap down. You're welcome. Oh. Astoria, short-lived educational cartoon by Warner Brothers. Interesting. I don't think I've ever heard of it. <laughs> Luckily, we Germans don't have fucked up lullabies. Mm. Most definitely. Most definitely. I don't. Red. Nope. Um. I'm racking my brain through sleeping pills trying to, uh, attempting to remember if it were a Geraldo or an Atel bit about drinking milk. Um, I, my instinct is saying Atel, but I'm going to check. I don't find reference for either. It's David Tell. It's David Tell. It's David Tell. Hold on. Um, I think. I can't find the direct uh, piece, um, Corey. So, um. I mean, Klepto, probably not, because most of it's just DMCA. Sorry. If it's not DMCA-able, then yeah, by all means. Um, good night, Puka. Do I hit my pen or wait for the pong to thaw? <laughs> Karina, uh, use your best judgment. Use your best judgment. This is literally 1948. Um... Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, it is. Oh, yes. Yes. That is, it, it is a universal, um, uh, studio, uh, like universal music has the, has the, uh, the owner ownership of the master on that one. Oh yeah. It is most assuredly. I'll listen to it though. I've got it open in a tab though. No, I'll enjoy that. Yeah, I'll enjoy that. Um, that's got the right the right sounds. Thank you. I'll stretch that. <sighs> so did we chase off all the vegans? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Fucking um, Dig is still here. Uh, so we didn't chase off all the vegans. <laughs> we spent, dude, we spent like 45 minutes to an hour. Cupcake, are you a vegan? Um... I had no idea, Cupcake. Um, you seemed like such an upstanding, uh, uh, upstanding human being. I, I had no idea you were one of those degenerate, uh, uh, degenerate fucks. Uh, <laughs> uh,
Are, veg- uh, are vegetarians degenerate fucks too? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 look. Uh, um, okay. Uh, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All of them says Viva. Look, I like picking on vegans and vegetarians. Look, here's, here's, here's my line. If you're doing it for health, if you're doing it for environmental purposes, right? I'm fine. I'm fine. 100%. It's what it's when you get preachy moralism that it bothers me. They're like, "Oh, it's about the, you know, the fucking animals and I don't want to eat the animals because the animals are blah 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 whatever." That's when I start getting annoyed. Right? Like, if you want to talk to me about factory farming, fine, 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 fine. But it, it's it's yeah, it's the, it's the moralizing that bothers me. Um all right, so somebody had at least a sub something or other. Um, oh, Pi do that. Uh, Pi do that. Um, okay, so there's a there's a contingent of cults. Uh, I'm sorry, of Trump's uh, Trump and QAnon members that have been in Dallas, Texas, for like a couple of months now. Um, and they're awaiting the return of J- uh, JFK Jr. Because apparently JFK Jr. isn't dead. He didn't die in a plane crash. He's apparently been working like behind the scenes to dismantle the um, the global Democrat pedophile ring, even though he was a lifelong Democrat. Um, literally called a JFK Democrat. But recently, as of recently, they've taken up drinking what's called MMS or Miracle Mineral Solution or Master Mineral Solution. It's chlorine dioxide. It's dilute chlorine dioxide um, in usually a, a water base. Um, it's It's said to cure cancer and HIV and, you know, uh, purge, uh, help you purge the toxins from chemtrails, um, all sorts of stuff. So recently they've, the, the QAnon Trump cult members that have been in, in Dallas, Texas, waiting for JFK Jr.'s like return to life, like some weird Christ-like figure for like a couple of months now are now drinking bleach. So... Yes, it was also supposedly going to cure. It supposedly cures autism too. That's that's one of their. Couldn't they afford the colloidal silver? Uh, I've manufactured colloidal silver. Um, wabba wabba. I need a job. Give me a job. Fucking. I'll take fifteen dollars an hour. Well, good luck. Uh, food service. Wabba. I don't know where you are, but food service is always hiring. Um. And yes, Rev, they are still there. Uh, can't get cancer and AIDS when dead. Exactly, Viva. Oh, uh, Klepto, it sounds fake, but it's not. That's the problem. What about radium water? They're not quite, they haven't circled all the way around to radium water yet. Um, so, I mean, there's video of them being there for like two months now. We've been fo- we we've been following these idiots outside Dealey Plaza for a while now. Um. So yeah, like we've watched our fair a uh, fair share. No, go do your own fucking research. I'm not your monkey. Fucking just literally type fucking Dallas JFK Jr. QAnon. So. You'll find plenty. You've hit your pen a few times, but the main goal is slow consumption and it's working. Nice. They probably have COVID now. A week or two ago, they were talking about how they can't taste anything. Oh, Jesus Christ, really? Australia, I missed that one. Um, I want to mix some whiskey and snake venom together and start selling it. Oof. It's on screen. Really? No, I can. (laughs) 
So I've been there for over a month now. Oh, this isn't the Dealey Plaza. Fuck you, Forbes. Um, Dealey, Dealey, spelled Dealey, D-E-A-L-L-U-I, something like that. D-E-A-L-E-Y, there we go. Here's them literally waiting at Dealey Plaza over a month ago now. Big reveal. The crowd is big. Ready to go. So that started, let's see, November 2nd. Um, so they've been there for one month and 18 days. Um, Hang on. Um, let's see. Where was the, um, where's the black guy one? All right, Wither, where were, where did you go off to? That's, a lar that's adorable, Viva. And let's see, it's Michael, what's this douchebag saying? Michael Brian Protzman, one of the Q and honors um, that brought them there. Um, yeah. I'm waiting for JFK himself. I know, right? Uh, uh, let's see. Where was... Um, do I have... Where's my sidebar? Oh, that's going to be a thing. Um... Okay. Let's try that. Mm. Yep, here we go. We're just moving forward in the timeline now. Here's here's part of the contingent that refused to leave. Wait a second. Hold on. We'll, we'll just continue down this road of the timeline of P Q and honors at Dealey Plaza that refused to leave. Oh, wait. Here they are. Only a couple of weeks ago. Let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We 
Here, here, here they are two weeks ago. Still, still there. Still there. We're just, we're just moving forward in the timeline. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's six days ago. Here's six days ago. Here's, here's them marching around Dallas. They, they continue to, uh, Here's them marching around your fucking city literally like 12 days ago. But it's all it's all it's all fake news. None of none of this happened. None of this happened. We have a handful of people that have been filmed continuously since last month. November 2nd, they congr uh, they congregated at Daily Plaza awaiting for the JFK Jr. return reveal, according to Q. And there is a contingent that has been there ever since. In fact, there's testimony. There are uh, family members who have been talking to press and have been talking to people online across the entire thing saying about how their mother and their father and their sister and their brother have literally uprooted their entire lives to go to this vigil, I guess, for lack of a better term. I know, right, Viva? Any minute now. I mean, baseline klepto, I can show you video of people being there. You can't show me shit. That's baseline, right? Like, that's right out of the gate. That's why chat's not engaging with you at all. You've put up nothing. You've put multiple challenges, but you've put up nothing. Meanwhile, you have made claims that none of this occurred, and I just start scrolling through the timeline of video and photos of this starting in November 2nd and still going uh, up to at least recently five six days ago right with multiple reports from family members that this is occurring like you've got nothing but claims that everything i've just said is fake news all of the video is fabricated or fake news and that i need to zoom out in the video which uh, zoom out in the photo which by the way apparently you don't know how photos work 
but that's neither here nor there. So I'm done discussing it at this point. I know. I'm in okay with it. Except it was. Maybe it wasn't today. Congratulations. Maybe they took a day off. Congratulations. There is a contingent of QAnon supporters that have basically moved operations to Dallas, Texas. This has been documented for over a month and a half now. By many people. So, like, I know, right, Crimson? I'm not mad. I think it's hilarious. And I think it's hilarious that you, like, adamantly go to bat for this. That's the sad part. She's like, it's not happening! It's not happening! It's not happening! Dude, there's video and fucking photos of it happening. It started November 2nd. There was a fucking contingent of QAnoners in your town waiting for the JFK Jr. return. This is... Well known. This news made its way all the way to Europe. And you're like, it's... Dude, it's a thing. I'm not mad about it. I think it's fucking hilarious. I personally am a fan. If you got... If if fucking QAnoners want to uproot their lives and move to Dallas, te Dallas, Texas to wait for JFK Jr.'s return and drink bleach until their intestines start going necrotic on them. That is their God-given right, and I will fight for their ability to do that. I ain't mad at it. I think it's hilarious. Oh God, it's designed, it's, it's the intention, it's the social engineers. Right? It's the think tanks and the social engineers getting getting to me, right? It's de it's designed by the social engineers and the think tanks in Washington, D.C. to create a divisive, a divisive atmosphere in our society to further divide the populace so the elites can run off. Right? Look, dude, I, I speak AJ too. I speak AJ too. I don't, I don't need a lesson on how to speak Alex Jones. I hate Alex Jones. Well, why do you hate him? That's just a divisive mechanism. He's just a human being. Why do you hate another human being? You shouldn't give in to hate like that. Some of you motherfuckers owe me if I do this. He used to be. He used to be a wonderfully entertaining person. He used to be. Once upon a time. shame about that. It really is. Oh, let me hide that sidebar. It is. Yes, yeah, so once we were BFFs, BFFs, and now no more. No more BFFs. 
I know, right? I miss, yeah, I do. Be Beast, I miss old fucking Alex Jones. Dude, old Alex Jones was hilarious. New Alex Jones is fucking dangerous. It's a shame. Um, it's because you just don't know how to have fun, apparently. Dude, have you? Literally, people have been linking you, linking that link for you, like for a while now. Um, fucking dude, have you never sat around with your buddies and gotten just blazed and talked about like fucking Atlantis and shit, right? Come on, I know, right, Viva. Had to had to had to strip down the the drag queen before he jumped on on the air. He's like, "Oh shit, fucking Kai, Kai, Kai! How do you how, how do you how do you get uh how do you get nail polish off?" Jesus Christ! I have Atlantean artifacts, dear sweet Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? <laughs> why did I get massive? Fine, fine, <laughs> just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Alex Jones, everyone, friend of the show. I mean, what do you mean you can't? You click the link and you join. Good night, Wither. Sleep well. Try, try, try reading. Try reading. Try reading literally the first sentence. Just, just use your reading skills. Miracles will happen. I believe it might be the second sentence, just, just as a point of order for myself. You don't get it. <sighs> Server expectations and guidelines. There are just a few things to consider before you come on in. Please check the ch uh, please click the check mark down below to acknowledge these guidelines. This isn't even like the court, uh, like the course sol uh, 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 synopsis, right? Like this isn't even like a college course where if you read the the actual synopsis at the back of it or like the, the the test instructions at the very end, they say like you know don't answer any questions, just write your name and turn it in, and you get a full score. Like this isn't this is literally the sen second sentence in it. It's 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 the most obvious thing I can do. Oh. Like, click the fucking checkbox and you get the welcome roll. Nice. Go. Nice. Kvass. <laughs> I didn't even check it. I just saw the... Oh, pretty. Click. Call back to the Turing tests. 
<laughs> Some people would even forget to write, uh, to write their name. I know, right? Uh, you go to voice chat and you make sure you have your microphone set up and you make sure you have headphones. Y'all motherfuckers owe me. <laughs> Marcus, 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 how is that your God given right as a bisexual? That is what, one of the weirdest fucking claims, uh, Marcus. My, oh, there we go. My Hello. God given right as a bisexual to ruin my spine. So, as a non bisexual, uh, uh, Marcus, do I not have a right to ruin my spine? Uh, all right, I'm gonna need you to count to five to give me a voice check or a volume check. Hello. Count to five, please. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Get your volume cool. level sorted out. Is bisexual when you purchase sex like workers? Yes, 100%. That's what that is. Um, let's see. No, you just got to get yours ruined for you. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, that, that makes sense. Um, what were we talking about? I forgot now. I had to learn how to computer. Um... I'm always hanging in my chair, not sitting. Oh, goat. Well, hmm. um, no, no, no. It's not a drunk cat. Drunk cat sounds a lot different, actually. Uh, I hope one day you guys can experience drunk cat. Drunk cat's hilarious. Drunk cat. Um, I, I like to hollow out dead squirrels and use them as flashlights. I'm kidding. That's gross. Why did you think of that? Um, so what is the intent of this call? I forgot. What were we talking about? It was um. Hold up, let me look. How how, how much have you been drinking tonight? I don't drink. I don't do anything. How much have you smoked tonight? I don't do anything. I don't do any drugs. I don't drink. Um. Yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll help. Uh, cupcake. Fuck it. Dallas. We were talking. What were we talking about? Dallas. Yeah, okay. Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Wait. Why though? Oh, okay, cool. Got you. Yeah, we're talking about the protests. No, so I was there, and there's, it, you'll you'll have like a small, small group of people. Everything you're seeing is like the same, like five to ten people. Yeah, that's our point. That's it. This is a bun. It's like a, it's like it's you a and your bunny is going a, around making it look like there's a thing, and it's really not. It's a contingent of QAnoners that have been there since November second. Now at this point, yeah, waiting I'd for say, JFK it's a bunch Jr. Of idiots return. that live in the area that go there and do some dumb shit once in a while. I promise. There's no like. Except you have no evidence to that whatsoever, and you have been so well, I've adamant. I've been to there. This. <laughs> I've been there. Like I've literally seen it. It's not. You think that there's have a you bunch spoken? of have you spoken not to them? Working? Yeah, that's probably true. Ha but like, have you spoken? Have, have you spoken to them? Have you spoken to them? Why? Why? No, I. Why would you? Why Dilly Plaza? Because of the John F. Kennedy, uh, uh, like that the, that link there? No. Why, like, what the fuck would the reason be? They hang out there for what? It's stupid. It's so stupid to think that. I promise you, a lot of these dumb stories. They do it on both sides. They do it to make people more divided. It's so easy. This is confirmation bias at its core. Make you hate the other side more. It's so easy to give someone like a fucking alley-oop to slam dunk. Like you don't even fact check. Like it's, I hate that because I fucking hate those motherfuckers too. Yeah, it's I almost it's almost like I've been following this story since November second when they were gathered but there by the hundreds. There. I've been there. I've been. I live so close. And like, yet you haven't spoken to them, and you've done nothing. The, but there's no one really there. Like I swear to you, like you'll see very small subsets of people. It, the context is, dude. You have to fucking believe me on this, like. No, because the you've done absolutely you're no work. news through media. I, pro I promise. I fucking promise the you. The QAnoners that were there on November 2nd literally published the videos themselves. You know that, right? They published the videos themselves? So what? What does that mean? Let's go look at them. We already did, dummy. Dummy? Don't call me dummy. Why are you mad? I'm just trying to Be say... Because okay. I'm wasting Forget time stop, in stop, a stop, finite stop. life. 
Okay, stop for a second. Just for, just imagine for a second. We literally watched like, a video you, you, of them. Okay, but do, what does it mean to you? What does that mean? Let's pretend everything you say is right. What does that mean to you? There's a bunch of QAnoners out in Dealey Plaza. What does that do? It's an amusing anecdote. No, it's not amusing. Oh, all right. Well, then clearly it's everybody. It's, have, it's not you amusing. A, Just everybody pack it up. Well, no, there's no one to pack it up. I told you there's no one there, really. So we're, we're not talk. You do realize I'm talking we're to chat now, like, right? Not, not I'm not see, I'm like, not talking to people in Dealey Plaza right now. I'm talking to chat right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm, my goal is um, I want to make uh, a bunch of money and then retire. That's me. The end. No, but seriously, I fucking hate how divided people get over dumb shit. I really, really, really do. Like, I know it's a stupid thing to talk about because it's fucking completely not even realistic, but what are you, left, liberal, right? What are you, conservative? What are you? I'm an anarchist. You're an anarchist. Okay. All right. Well, that's kind of fucked up, you fucking asshole. So we should all be beating you up. But, like, no, seriously, cool. like. Calls to violence. Everyone's so, I'm joking, of course, but everyone's so. That was fun. Well, that was worth my time. Oh, goat, that's already been done. That's already been done. Yeah. That was, that was instant. Uh. Well, that was that was definitely fun. All right, um, ten o'clock. You know what? You guys can have your points back. Just uh, let me refund all that. Uh, let me go to stream manager. I'm I'm. You know what? That was. That was a thing. That was the thing. Um, yeah, we're doing this. Nomad, you join the Discord server, you get in the voice chat, um, and then I move you on to on air, and we go from there. Nomad, here's here's what I'll say. Nomad, what do you want to talk to me about? I'll I'll cancel the raid out. I could use something to cleanse my palate, as it were. Um I, okay, so Nomad, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, dude, that's a whole conversation. Here's, here's what, um, here's what I will say, Nomad. Come back, come back for, like, uh, tomorrow's stream. Tomorrow's a nighttime stream. Tomorrow's 11.30 p.m. We tend to get weird at nights. So, like, come just, come back for, like, a Wednesday stream. 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Ask me, um, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I, I, I think that, like, this is probably the point where we should, we should pull it. Um... Rev, note it. Uh, note it, Rev, and go from there. Um, everybody else, I may be in VC afterwards. Yeah, you are. You're welcome, Nomad. Um, I may be in VC afterwards, though. Anyway, so. Anyway, we're gonna raid over to Mitre my my favorite Aussie um and uh, we'll go from there so 
Um, yeah. Either way. Everyone, catch y'all later. Be nice to me, Trey. Uh, I hope he doesn't fucking yeet some of you motherfuckers. Um, but all right, we will, um, yeah, I'm out. Catch y'all later. Peace.